Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. Oh God, can't we tell it's coming into the autumn now. I look out my windows and the leaves are all going the ready golden colour. Eventually they'll go brown and drop. And then that's winter. Right? But I love the cut changing colours of the leaves. And where I am, I can see all that. I see all the changing colours of the leaves. Anyway, I've come across another video today. And I went and found the source of the video. I didn't... Right, this video we're going to be watching later. It's got no talking on it. It is a helicopter view of the 27th of February. Hold on, I just need to move my cat. Come on. Come on, big boy. Oh, come on, my lap. Right. And um, it's from the 27th of February. So there's no talking in it. It's just... And it's like 45 minutes long. But it's interesting. And we will watch that. And I'll put my bit of commentary to it. Anyway... The other, last week, was it Friday? Yeah. Friday, there was an interview by uh, Bullhorn Betty. I know some of you don't like Bullhorn Betty, right? But sometimes she comes up with the goods, right? And she came up with the goods this time. She came up with the interview of one of the relatives of Katie Proudfoot. Now, I must admit, I was a bit surprised about this. I had heard about the post that was put on a Facebook page, but I didn't realise it was this woman. But I'm a bit surprised that no other members of the family have come forward and said anything about Sebastian. Not one. Not one member of Katie's family has come forward. You've had... Seth's sister talk. You've had his mother talk. His grand, his father, his father or grand, or his father talk. Right? You've had them all come out on Seth's side talking. Right? But you've had no one from Katie Proudfoot's side of the family come out and talk. And this is the first person to come out and talk. And I'm glad she has. I'm glad she has. Right, to set things right. She's got her own suspicions. And we're coming on to nearly eight months now. Nearly eight months. That's a long time. If someone's got got him, that's a long time to be holding on to a child. If someone knows where he is, please phone to the FBI. Or the FBI. I will have the numbers in the description. I think I have got the numbers actually. Hold on. I'll have a look. Uh, hmm. No, I've took it off. No, I've took it off. Anyway, so I will put the phone numbers in the description. Because, as I said on my thumbnail, say his name, say it loud. Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, get his name out there. Do not let this go cold. I've noticed a lot, like, I had to open up a new Facebook page, right? Because Facebook... Apparently wouldn't let me on, onto my own page. Apparently I put some up, which I don't know what. And they weren't telling me what. So I had to open up a new Facebook page. And when I opened up my last Facebook page for this group, for my channel, I was finding loads of people who was supporting Sebastian. Right? Because of their profile pictures. Right? Now, 
I'm not seeing that no more. The profile pictures have gone down. No one has got Sebastian on their Facebook page as their profile picture no more. I never did because my my Facebook page isn't just for Sebastian. Right? So, and it's just upsetting that even on social network sites, his name is not being talked about. His picture is not out there no more. Right? Anyway. I'm going to, oh, hang on, I'm going to plug my laptop in before we go any further. Oh, that's bad. Turn it on, it won't help. Yeah. Don't. Do what? My cat sits upon this, like where I am now, I'm in my enclosed balcony. But before it used to be an open balcony. But now they've been closed and put um, windows all the way around it. But I've still got the old window ledge, the old windowsill from when it was an outside open balcony. My one cat gets up there and he keeps knocking everything off my windowsill. And I just told him, you know, he just gave me this glare to say, don't tell me, no. Bobby, Bobby, hey, no. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to watch this video of the, I don't know what relation she is to Katie or to Sebastian, I don't know if it's an aunt or what, I don't know, but we're going to listen to it, it's very interesting. Hold on, babe. Uh, normally I post all these onto my YouTube channel, but uh, onto my Facebook channel so that I can keep them all in one place, but I haven't. I've been slipping lately. Did I download it? I did. But I've got it here. So, I know people don't like her, but as I said, she comes, when she gets, when she comes, when she gets that nugget, she gets the golden nugget, like, literally. Alright. Alright, I'm trying to get this back. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get to where the relative comes on. I'll leave it out there. Right. Just make sure everything's okay on this end. Put me down there. And okay, away we go. Well, hello, my dear. How are you doing? Hi, Betty. Hi, I'm Betty. fine. I'm fine. Uh, wonderful. I would just like to say for about five minutes, if not that, maybe less, there is one big echo. And I'm thinking, am I hearing, am I hearing this twice? <laughs> turn the echo down. Someone turn your echo down. I'm going. So I'm sitting there watching it on my TV and I'm sitting, going, will you turn your echo down? I've got, like on my mic, I've got the echo down. I've got the echo right down. <laughs> because I remember when I first used my mic, I didn't have the echo down. And I, I was watching it back and I thought, aha, I'm not putting that one out. The echo was up. So I had to, I always make sure now the echo is down. So I apologise for the first few minutes. I'm going to have to turn it down there because it is a bit loud, a bit deafening for me because of the echo as well. So I apologise for the echo. It is not me. It is either Bullhorn Betty or Yaga. Wonderful. So, so I just want to tell you 
thank you. I know that this is very hard I think for it's you. Yaga. And Yaga. I just want you to kind of introduce yourself to everybody, if you don't mind. So I did so a post. I did a post. Um, um, my name is Gaida. I am I part am of part Katie's, of Katie's Rosenbaum, Rosenbaum family. family. A very large a very family. Large family. Yes, yes, I am a biological, biological mom's, mom's cousin. 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 And, and from the beginning, from the beginning when, I when I found out Sebastian, Sebastian was missing, I have been, I have been watching this, this crazy, crazy carnival. carnival. And, and it has been it so has upsetting. Been so upsetting. Yeah, I, I can only imagine how upsetting something like this, especially everything you've heard, can be. Uh, uh. <laughs> explain, so you did explain, you know, you are, so you're the cousin to her, her mother. Yes. And um, what do you, what prompted you to make that post. I know that you've been very, you've been a good contributor in the chat and I know you've been kind of keeping a low pro profile. And I, I personally know there's been a, a few things that have upset you, but this par particular post was, it seemed a little deeper. It seemed, what prompted you to make the post and I'm just going to read it in just a, a moment after you answer this question. Well, well like I said, like I've been, said, watching, been watching, this watching this from the very from beginning. The very beginning. And, and interview, interview after interview. After interview the story kept, kept changing. And, and I was I was, I, I Got an email. Got an email. No, no, a private a message private from message a couple from of my cousins, my cousins. After a picture, after a picture was, posted, was posted, and, and a lot of horrible things, things were being said about our family. family. And, and I, will I will defend my family, my family to my dad. To my dad. Right. But then but I kept seeing the story change, and my heart just kept sinking every time I heard it. Changing, 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 and I didn't want to believe that there was any capability of hold that on, happening. Hold on just a second. I think we're having some echoing. No, the echo is oh, no. Okay, I just fixed it. They said that it fixed. Sorry about that. Go ahead. And every time the story changed, my heart would sink. And I was in a lot of face group, Facebook groups, and anytime I would go and chat, I would see these comments and I would ask, you know, what makes you say that? Or, well, tell me why you're saying that. And anytime I had something different to say, I even had one gentleman, well, I say gentleman, and I'm going to say that politely because I am not here for any hate. Tell me, do not ever come to Hendersonville. Don't ever come to Tennessee. And I asked him, why, why do you say that? And he's like, trust me. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. And I have some friends on my face group now on my Facebook now who actually saw that. And I'm like, wow. And I, <laughs> what is going on? And at that time I kept watching, catching little snippets of different YouTube creators. And I'm hearing all this hate towards Seth. And, and then I'm hearing a lot of comments that Chris is making and I'm really paying attention. I'm make, taking notes and, and I have a very, very large family. Who Express usually how, how, when people, people hear how large your family is, uh, tell us how about how large your family is. We are over 120. Just on the Rosenbaum side. Just for clarification for everybody, because, you know, sometimes large families are, you know. Sugar. I didn't hear that bit before. Right. I didn't hear how large their family was before. And I'm sitting here eating what are they called? Star mix. Star mix. And I nearly choked on one of the sweets. Then I heard how big her family. 
What? 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 Like? Not just on her side of the family. You know, 20 or 30. I mean, oh, I don't no, know. No, no. Put that into context. When my grandmother died, my, my granny, and I'm the only one named after her, there was something like 49 grandchildren, 39 great, great you know, great grandchildren, 30 some great, great grandchildren, and it's been growing ever since. So we are over 100 strong. Wow. Uh, so let me let me just take a, a little moment. I'm just going to read this post so everybody knows what post I'm referring to. Is that okay with you? Absolutely. All I will say is obviously. There was no flipping TVs around at that time. We didn't say that to my mum and dad. We didn't say because I had seven. <laughs> and we just, but I never, I never, because I wasn't that brave. My brothers or my sisters, my two older sisters, the same. Wasn't there a TV around when you, when you were younger, mum? I used to sit there and cringe because I'm thinking, I'm waiting for that, you cheeky little fecker, and the hand to go with it, you know what I mean? But obviously, there was no TV around at that time. <laughs> Sorry. I have a hundred. Oh, wow. Absolutely. Okay. So this is what she posted on the Justice for Sebastian uh, Facebook group. It says, this will be my last post, and I hope everyone reading this will understand why. Since the beginning, I struggled with the thought that a member of my very own family could ever do something as heinous as getting rid of their child. Um, like every single YouTuber was saying, then I watched this inter this interview. I can't, sorry, it's a little blurry, and, and became a skeptic. Then this second interview and felt sick. The third interview, all doubt was gone. I had held hope, uh, maybe an accident. Then she left town saying he could be anywhere. Now, blood relative only holds so much hope and faith, and I couldn't pray this feeling away. Wow. Months later, so many lies. YouTube creators flipping the script as if they're threatened. No way, I thought. They never wanted a single vigil. They never went to a single vigil, couldn't find time for searches, lied on a Sumner County custody physician, fully cleaned or fully cleared by LE and in no danger or threat. She I believe when they said lied on um lied about something, it was when there was that court full of custody visit visitation. And um, apparently Chris had put down or checked the box saying he was cleared by the police, by law enforcement. And he hasn't been cleared. No one has. Sorry, I'm trying to do it this week and not choke on you. Right, so... I think that's where it comes about where they say he lied. Because if that is the case, something needs to be done because he should not have put on there that like he has been cleared. He may have done um, a polygraph. He may have done. We don't know because FBI aren't telling us. TBI aren't telling us. All we get is what off Nick Bell, Nick Bell is, and that is what he gets off the law enforcement. And he said, apparently, law enforcement have said they had took a, a polygraph. So, we have to believe they have. We have to trust that some of them are doing their job. No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't trust them. I trust FBI. And maybe even TBI. But I do not trust some of county sheriff's office. Anyway, let's go on seem to love her summer with someone else's child forgetting her own. Now, anyone who's steadfast in finding Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers is met with threats, take uh, fake profile harassment and legal action, gag orders, First Amendment rights stripped. 
Every day I truly feel like I wanted to apologize, but every day I wanted to scream at every state and federal representative for the state of Tennessee and ask them, can you not see what's happening in this county? What mother steals her missing child's name out of the mouth of people who want him found? Why is nothing being done about the threats to the people searching? Then I want to ask my extended family, why are you all so quiet? Do you think this is okay? I don't. If you did nothing wrong, prove us wrong. Let people search without fear, hang flyers without getting police called on them, and show his name and picture. Stop spending your time and money in court on lawyers silencing people over lies. Let people help bring him home. Otherwise, tell us what happened. That was pretty emotional. I cried for days before I wrote that. And it was pretty emotional. And your family has been, for the most part, silenced. Is is there a reason? I mean, I know that your most of your family had already previously been doxxed. Yeah. And even though they were doxxed, I mean, my family... And that, again, I don't believe in being anyone doxxing anyone. I really don't. It's not safe. You're putting that family in harm. Everything. No one should be doxing any family member. No one. Is normally not quiet. So it's, I, I'm actually surprised I haven't been getting a lot of response from them. But wait. go ahead. You know, I have seen posts on other pages you know, questioning who I am. Trust me, I am who I am. <laughs> I am who I say I am. I have receipts. Yes, but, yes. You don't need to produce your receipts on here, but no. she's, she's produced receipts. So, um, and but, just for clarification, so everybody knows, you haven't really seen Katie in a while, correct? I have not seen her since my her, her grandfather my uncle Don died, and that was in 2015. And I, and I, heard, go ahead. I, I did get to meet Sweet Sebastian then. Aww. And I did hear that was her favorite uncle. And you give her favorite her grandfather was grand one. Right, you've run that once before. Um, can you give us a little bit of uh, family history? We don't. We want to be respectful, but um, just to give a little uh, history. Give me just a second. I've got it on here. I just want to explore um, <coughs> the history, who who you are to that an extra new relationship with Katie, uh, where she was born, how close the family was, just some family dynamic stuff, if you don't mind. Um, when she was born, she was not around the family. Her mother was married in West Virginia, and it she did not come to our side of the family until she was like eight or nine ish. Mm -hmm. um, gosh, her grandma and grandfather, they doted, doted over her. Very uh, proud of her as well too. Yes. She was a very coddled person. And everybody in the family, you know, anytime we circle Don and Nancy, how's Katie? How's Katie? Because she... now I was, I was led to believe that Katie went into some sort of foster care. Right? We all know something bad happened in Katie's family. We know that, and we're not going there. We're not. Right? I've even had the divorce papers given to me and at the very beginning of this case near the very beginning and I thought I'm not going over them because that is nothing to do with Sebastian going missing right nothing anyway but so I was always thought she'd been in care but she wasn't she was with family You know, they weren't, she wasn't with them long. She went to live with her dad. And I know everybody says her Aunt Penny, but it was in between her dad and her Aunt Penny. David 
David Payne and her Aunt Penny, but mostly with her dad, David. And um, we would always ask, you know, how's Katie? How's Katie? Oh, she's doing great. Oh, she's doing great. And, you know, when she graduated, I had lived in North Carolina next to her, you know, and was, was and still am very close to her aunt and uncle there. Um, I remember my uncle Don and aunt Su Suzanne came in town to visit and it was right when Katie graduated and she was going to culinary school and she was a chef at a really nice restaurant at the Virginia Beach Oceanfront. And she was, oh, she's doing great. But that was a really hard time in her life. There was a lot going on at that time when she was 17, before she turned 18. And it had nothing to do with Seth. Gotcha, gotcha. That was my next question is, did you ever know or know about Seth? No, she had a boyfriend that wasn't Seth. So before Seth, gotcha, yeah, there was gotcha. another boyfriend. How about Chris? Did you ever know about Chris no. or ever meet Chris? So all this BS about how Chris was grooming her from a young age. It's not on. It wasn't. You know what I mean? No. After um, she moved away, you know, she had left and, you know, she had Sebastian when she was 19. Right. But they were married by closer, then. And closer, closer to 20, right? Yeah, closer to 20. But, you know, and he, Seth got permission from my Uncle Don to marry her. Gotcha. And I will tell Now, do you really think her Uncle Don is the one who, who, who she doted on, right? He doted on her and everything. Now, do you really think her Uncle Don would have gave Chris permission to marry her if at any time he thought he be she he had been grooming her no i don't think so tell you my uncle don is a very religious honorable man yeah what was yeah. your back in the back in the day whenever you saw katie did you want to explore on that a little bit more about the uncle and did you have any other information like you know uh how did he i guess if you know maybe how did seth approach your uncle to ask him for katie's hand in marriage i you know i don't know exactly how it happened but the fact that he did it and the fact well let me put it this way the fact that my uncle don gave his permission I will tell you means a lot Gotcha. because of my uncle Don's very strong faith in his religion and his love of God. He would not have given just any Joe Schmo permission to marry Katie. Katie was very much, I want to say his pride and joy. What was your fondest memory of Katie? Um, I think when she first got there, I think because it was, and I don't want to go into, you know, what happened, right. happened, right. And, you know. Yeah, um, we're not going to touch that subject. No, and it, it has nothing to do with this. But she was a cute, cute little girl. Just even at, you know, eight, nine years old, she was just a cute little strawberry blonde. She was, and kind of, oh, she was headstrong. Don't get me wrong, headstrong. But she had- That's, the, that's a good character. That's a good, that's a good character, you know, um, in, in a person. I, I, I personally like headstrong people at times. Sometimes- it's a, it's a Rosenbaum trait. I will tell you that much. Gotcha. <laughs> Eight out of ten of them headstrong, but um, she was just the cutest thing, you know. Even for an eight, nine year old, you know, she was spoiled. I don't, you know, I don't think there was ever anything she asked for that she didn't get, and knew how to get it. Mm -hmm. But um, 
we would, like I said, we would get updates and stuff and occasionally, you know, Aunt Suzanne or somebody would say, well, you know, she wants this and we're, we'll make sure she gets it. But no, they couldn't say no. Right. It was, you know, everybody, you, you would catch people say, oh, poor Katie, you know, mm -hmm. but, you know, she knew it. She always, as she got older, she knew what she wanted and she wasn't going to, she's, she's just going to do what she wants. Gotcha. And, um, you know, she graduated very well. From what I understand, she was a great cook. But um, she wasn't a bonding person, except for now with my with her grandpa, my uncle Don, my aunt Suzanne, and like her uncle and aunt in North Carolina. And I'm not going to name any names, but she was very close to them. There was a little thing that happened in. right about the time her and Seth got married that was going on another rift in the family, but which is why I never met Seth because he did not come to my grandfather. I mean, to my uncle Don's funeral, but they were still married. Gotcha. Did she, is that, is that when she, um, that's when she brought Sebastian, correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and what was uh, Sebastian's demeanor meeting new people for the first time? Mm. He was a cute little smiley thing, but not the kind that would come up and go to strangers. Mm -hmm. But he knew like my aunt and he knew Francis and which kind of shocked me, but so the people that he didn't know, you know, he would go with them and we would be introduced. And, you know, I was only at that particular day. I was only there for about an hour and a half, two hours, but God, he was cute. But the, there wasn't a lot of mother, son kind of, Oh, come here, baby. You know, and it was, it wasn't that it was like, mm -hmm. but there was a lot of people coming and going. And I think that was a lot of overstimulation. Gotcha. But, you know, I know he hadn't been diagnosed, but you could tell he was bothered. But still, this by, by the thing. strange people, by the overwhelming crowd, or both? We're 100 strong. Coming and wow. going. This is in their house in Chesapeake. Coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. That's a lot of people. Yeah, especially to a kid that's not accustomed to that coming and going. And, you know, he was like seven and a half, maybe seven ish. This is in, two, in May of 2015 when he died. So, yeah, that's a lot of stimulation for a young kid. Especially yeah. when you, they didn't know fully what was going on. I don't think he had been fully diagnosed at that point. Now, your family had been doxxed. And I know that mm -hmm. uh, a lot still of the, being <laughs> Still being doxxed. And I know a lot of your some of the incorrect, there were a lot of incorrect allegations that had come out about your family early on in this case. Am I correct on that? Yes. Now, now did you want to clarify that here or, or no, I, I forgot to ask you. Well, we were, the, there because were some it kind people. Of goes, it kind of goes into the other stuff. So I was, yeah, it sure. does. Well, yeah. there were some people that, you know, when the picture of Grandfather Mountain came out, there were some people in a particular group that started doxing all of the women in the Rosenbaum family, including Katie's biological mother, and even my mother, who was 77 and was in intensive care. And I think I know what group that was, but I'm not saying. I've even tried to join that group again, and you know, I can't even find it. I don't know if it's changed its name or something, but I can't find it. 
so I don't know where it is. <laughs> so I do not believe in doxing. We've got, like, as you said, 77 year old women. You know what I mean? That is so wrong to dox and put out addresses and everything of people. So wrong. You're putting people's lives in danger. Alright? So, it's just so wrong. Sorry, I agree with this Yaga. Yaga, what name she goes by? It should not be dox. You should not be doxing anyone. Kara had just had a heart attack. Who looked wow. nothing like this woman on Grandfather Mountain. You know, her aunt in North Carolina, my cousin in another part of North Carolina. I mean, they were pulling private photos. They were posting addresses, you know, putting them on this fake. Well, she looks like her. And, and they would literally at one point they went to the mother's house. Some of these people that lived in that area and police had to be called. Mm -hmm. And that's when I got the message. And like I said, I will I will fight tooth and nail for my family if we are being wronged. And I sent an e a private message to the administrator and notified them that this was private and not for public dissemination. This is a cease and desist. Look, you know, you can say what you want to right. on the investigation. But our family has nothing to do with it. What you find out about Chris and Katie or Seth, or if you find anything about Sebastian, help yourself. But stop with this. And after my post, it started all over again. Gotcha. And then, um, you know, there were rumors. We're going to get into the conversation here in just a moment about... Mm -hmm you know, where you were, you know, how, when you learned about the whole situation, but uh, I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit, just, um, I asked you because there were rumors going around that it's possible that someone in your family is holding Sebastian, I against his will, but like my internet. Um, you know, hiding from do you know anybody in your family that has Sebastian or is hiding Sebastian in any way? No, I do not. And if I did know, I would be the first to call the FBI or her dog. And if I ever caught wind of it, I would be the first to call. Right. Because he needs to be but but now, Francis was um, one you know for a Right. Now, what makes me highly suspicious of her, I'm not highly suspicious of her. I'm just a bit suspicious of some other possible members of the family. Right. Because as she said, it is a hundred strong. Right. Is and they've not know what none of the adults have spoken up for Sebastian or even for Katie. None of them, right? I think Chris's sister spoke out once, once or twice. You know what I mean? She put posts out once or twice. And one of the first posts she put out was, We've been searching since 6 30 this morning. Uh, no, you hadn't. Yeah, you had not Right. So, but since then, you've heard nothing from his family. Not even, well, you do hear from his mom and dad, his mom and stepdad occasionally. You don't hear nothing of uh, Chris or Katie no more. I should imagine Faith, hopefully, has gone back home to her loving mother. Right, they can't afford not to let her go back home, especially with this case going on as well. You can't afford to keep faith because, oh my God, FBI would be on him like a tongue of bricks. Right? So, 
it's just I'm just a bit curious about other members of the family. Could they? Is she in touch with every member of her, all the adults in that family? Is she in touch with them? It's hard to say. Right? So, but with that light situation, with the lights, I've watched them light videos, I've watched the mob crew, I've seen the cars, the car or vehicle that's parked there, I've seen the lights come on. But what I'd like to see is the full video of that. Because the angle of that camera should get more than what is showing. Right? And we're only getting a little clip of that view of that camera. And we're not getting all of it. And I'd like to see from the moment those lights, well, before the lights come on, before that, like half an hour before the lights started, and I'd like to see all the lights again, the car pulling round, because from what I've seen on one angle, it should even catch the car when it had pulled up on Kate, Caitlin Drive. Right, well, should have even caught it there. So, I don't know. I'd like to see more of that video because there's a lot cut out of it still. And as I said, I'm just a bit dubious about some members, possible, possibly some members. I don't know, just my opinion. In fact, Sebastian is not with Francis. Am I correct about that? Or what would you like to say about that? Well, I know for a fact he was not there in June because okay. there was somebody else there in June and he was not there in June. So, and I do not believe for one second. I, well, you know what? I do not know for a fact and I'm not going to say I know for a fact because I don't. Um, do I think she, he would be there? No. Because Suzanne lives there and she wouldn't be so desperate to find him. Gotcha. And she's been working to try to find information. Yeah. yeah. She misses her, her great grandson. Right. Is there anything um, about your history, about your aunts, uncles, your family dynamic that we didn't cover? Cause I'm going to be moving forward into um you know, fast forwarding to Sebastian here in just a moment, but I want to make sure that I cover everything that you would like to talk about, about the history. You know, I, 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 I don't want to pry too much because of the sensitive nature of some of the stuff uh, that you know about. Um, so I just, you know, want to check your comfort level. Well, I know after this conversation, everybody's going to be doing all kinds of searches and everything because I've seen what, the, what gets done. Nobody's family is perfect. My family is far from perfect. And in search what you want, say what you want. We grew up loving each other. And like all families, you have tiffs, you walk away, you come back, you do your thing. And there are some bad elements in our family. There are some wonderful elements in our family. But no matter what, no matter how distant we are, we will come together if something is wrong. I will say this too. This is the quietest my family has ever been about anything. I don't mean to... And that's what makes me so dubious about her side of, her side of the family. This is the quietest I've ever been about anything. She just said when there's anything going on, in the, they all come together. But they haven't come together on this. Why not? 
why aren't the family speaking up? Why aren't they there fighting and saying his name? Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. You know what I mean? Why aren't they keeping his name out there? It's family. Come together and get his name put out there. Get his picture out there. Christ's sake, his mother isn't doing it. So please, someone do, do it in the family. And we've got his father doing his best as ca is, he can. I'm not saying his father is perfect. He's not by far. But he's the only one who's out there trying to get these interviews on national TVs and whatever and getting organisations to come back in. I've also noticed not drop divers are back on the search again. Because I was looking for one of their videos so that like, I could just show a short clip of it today. And I noticed they've been back out on the search again for Sebastian. Cry, but why do you think? I can't figure it out. I mean, honestly, when I did that post, I was expecting to get bombarded. You know, what are you doing? Why are you, you know, or even something. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I heard a peep. Right. And I know they're on Facebook. I know they're seeing this. Some of them could be in the chat. Right. But I, I have, my parents have not heard anything. I have not heard anything. And I'm sh I'm honestly shocked because I am not here to hate anybody. I am here for people to focus on finding Sebastian. Stop hating everybody. Stop this mess. You know, there's too much clutter in this, all of this. There's a little boy, whether he be alive or not, who deserves to be in the right place. And he is a part of my blood. And that's what matters to me. And I was watching a channel the other night. Right, Lady Kay, I'll give her a shout out. Lady Kay talks, I'll give her a shout out. Right. And I can't remember what they're talking about. They're talking about Sebastian, they're talking everything, right? And I said, I put a comment up saying, what will these channels do? These channels that have built their channels by, on the case of Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, right? You just focus primarily on Sebastian, right? They don't look at any other cases, right? Well, I look at other cases. This is why I'm getting so behind on everything because so much information has been coming out on this other case I'm following. And then we've got a little Elijah Vu and I'm trying to keep up with that one and make sure I'm not going to miss anything on that case. I've got the Audrey Cunningham. I'm trying to keep an eye on that case. And I've got so much going on and not enough hours in the day, right? And then I've got my other channel that I've just started doing for my 5D Diamond Art. So I'm doing videos during the day, half hour videos or 15, 20 minute videos for that. And there's just not enough hours for everything. But I'm going to have to set myself a target. Get up in the morning. Get yourself washed, dressed, whatever. Get your coffee, get something to eat, a snack, a like toast or something in the morning because I'm not a breakfast person. But I do like my bacon rolls with coleslaw on. Oh, my Lord. <gasps> I thought I used to love my bacon, my sandwiches, little rolls with bacon and mushrooms and brown sauce. But since I've put on this one medication, mushrooms to me is yuck. I can't. I eat them very rarely now, right? Very rarely do I eat, I eat them now. And, um, but I just thought the other day I picked some bacon up and I was doing a roll and I thought, oh, what about putting some coleslaw on? Oh, uh, my Lord. If you've never tried a, a roll or a bap, whatever, or a carb, whatever you call it, right? With bacon 
and cold snow on. You don't know what you're missing. It is happening. I can't get enough of it. I'm eating two, three, four of them a day. I really am. That time I am on this. Anyway, what was you talking about? I can't remember what I was talking about. Let's get on with the video. And that's what should matter to everyone with the same last name I have. But I'm not seeing it from the mother. And that's so disheartening because uh -uh. and I wish I could say I did. I, I truly have tried, I've prayed. And so many lies on on online just oh have, have have you seen her behave this way ever in the past? Um the fake tears. Yeah. Um she is what I see is someone on a mission. Get what I want, no matter what. And in my opinion. And that was, that's what I recognize. And I see hate, which is scary. And that is scary because hate is a strong word. You know what I mean? Very strong word to say. And I must admit, I haven't seen that in her, in Katie. But I don't know Katie like this lady does. So she would know. And... It's a bit like Seth. He he knows as well. And that's why he can't watch those interviews. He can't watch her sitting there, sit there and watch her lie after lie after lie. Now, talking about, she mentioned how a, a story changed, yeah? I'd like to know what her... Uh, what? When the police were called in and whatever, and she gave them the, her, what was it that you call it? I can't think now. When the police took her statement, yeah, and she told them what happened, how it happened or whatever. I want to know why the police aren't doing nothing about her lying. Because I can assure you, she's added to her story since making that statement to the police. She's added. I said, after watching, not because I didn't see the first interview on Duchess Channel. I didn't listen to it at first. I didn't know it'd been out. Right? And then I seen that one on the news channel. And I sat here on my channel and I said, you watch. Next time they do an interview, they'll talk about and say his name. They say Sebastian Moore. Chris won't keep calling her mum. Right? And what happened? They did another interview. He stopped calling her mum and they talked about and mentioned Sebastian's name. And I said, yep. And then next time, they're going to add some else to the story. And they did. Oh, yeah. Well, we had, uh, I heard uh, a thud from his room or something like that. I'm thinking... When are you going to stop making these stories up? When are you going to stop adding to your story? Is it because you don't think we believe your first story? Well, you're right there. We didn't. But please, don't add to it. You're not helping yourself. You're not helping Sebastian. You are not here to be believed. You're not. All they want from you is to find Sebastian. And if you can't tell them the truth, then how on earth are they going to find him? How on earth are, is anyone 
the law enforcement, TBI, FBI, anyone going to be able to find Sebastian if his own mother cannot keep her story straight. I don't like that, and, and I can see it. You know, I have seen, you know, I've seen photos of her that were shared with, you know, from Don and Suzanne and from aunts and uncles of her, you know, just so happy and just super beautiful. And that's not her. I have to agree because I saw some photos of her that Seth had shown me. And wow, what a night and day difference. That is not her. Yeah. Yeah. But so, she is not defenseless and she is not um, the control, the controlling type. She, it, it, this whole thing is twisted. So the facade of her, you know, there's a lot of people that believe that she's kind of this, you know, a battered wife that doesn't no. speak for herself is kind of, you know, the impression many people have expressed. Um, I'm not, I'm not believing that. Mm -mm. Um, she is a strong person do i believe she has after effects or probably some issues from years ago mm -hmm. absolutely who wouldn't right but i don't think there are issues in the way of that's them not me not i think there are more issues of temper right Something else I also heard, right? Children that are being abused, right? And come from a broken home. And things like that. Yeah. They, as they get older, they can become very manipulative to get what they want. So something else I heard, can't remember where I heard it, it was a few years back now I heard this. I don't know if it was on a TV program or what, I don't know. But that's what I heard, that children that come from broken homes and abusive homes, right? When they get older, like in their teens, all, well, say 10 onwards, they can be very controlling and they will do anything to get what they want. Gotcha. But you yourself have never seen it. I guess the word is manipulative. You just clear up in your bed. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, do you want to explore that a little more, or do you just would, would you just like? I'll leave just that leave it? that. Now we're going to just forward to Sebastian just a little bit. Um, when did you hear Sebastian went missing? you are down. Did you want to explain a little bit about? No family called us. No one in the family called us. And she just mentioned it. I'm like, who? And then she sent it in to my mom and I told her Dan must have posted something. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, nobody told us. And that's when I started researching it, and I was like, oh, why did nobody say anything? Why is this so private? Right. No, we were not, it was not, and you, like I said, normally when something happens in this family, you know, 
somebody has their home phone in one hand and their cell phone in the other and it's like a game of what is it? that's what i mean why did no one in the family mention this for nearly a month it took nearly a month before she found out And that's what makes me so suspicious that it is possibly someone in her family down the line, down the road a bit, right? Who may have Sebastian or know something about this case. And that is why they're so quiet. They may know something about this case, and that is why they're so quiet. That, that pillow talk or whatever, where it's like going through the whole chain. Mm -hmm. No, phones didn't ring. When did you learn about it from the end? Was it days, weeks, months? Mm, it was about a month it was after the first couple of interviews and that's i had to go back and watch them because i'm um, i had been chatting chatting with her it was probably mid-march mm -hmm. no late march wow because we were talking wow. about some events that go on here where i live and me possibly taking a trip down there it was late march yeah so you so so a whole half of the family was completely in the dark about a missing relative for well over yeah. a month to well over a month oh yeah how, do you know how the aunt heard about it was it through another family member or did they just well, um, she's close about she's the one that's very close to her Oh, wow. And so it still took that long for her to find out? No, she, I think she knew the whole time, but it wasn't advertised. It. And that's when it. I immediately started getting the messages about being doxxed and stuff as well. It was like a week or two later. See, they only really found out about this case because YouTubers were going and digging into the case's background, right? So that's really why they found out about this case. Why the aunt didn't tell anything to the side, that side of the family, I don't know. Because I, there's been times where I've been on the phone and like someone's telling me something and I'm going, okay. And at the same time, I've got her on speaker. And at the same time, I'm texting whoever else might need to know, right? And then when I've texted them, I'll text someone else. Or I'll come off the phone and I'm phoning someone else. And at the same time, while I'm on the phone, I'm still texting. You know what I mean? And it's just a bit weird that the aunt would have known about this, but didn't say anything to anyone. And now, none of this lady's family, side of her family, are talking about it. They've not said anything about it. I can't remember. No, it was in May, the first week of May when I think that picture came out late April. Mm -hmm. And it was the first week of May when, oh Lord, because my mom had been in the hospital. That is so sad. I'm sorry to hear that. How's your mom doing? My mom is fine. Thank you. We almost lost her. She spent several days in CCU and ICU, and it was a mess, but she is home fine and doing well. Oh, well, that's that's at least some uh, good news. And I think you've already kind of went over us about your initial thoughts about what you heard, because you you just wanted to get as much information about it as possible. Once you heard it, it sounds like you were doing what kind of due diligence did you do? Maybe, maybe I should ask it a different way. Oh. Uh, what kind of research did you do um, when you learned of Sebastian's disappearance? Well, first I went on Facebook. And. At, the, at that time, you know, there really wasn't a whole lot, but there was some. So then I started Googling it and I started looking, it kept sending me to YouTube. Mm -hmm. 
And every channel, because I would subs I subscribe to all of them, and I was listening to every one of them, and I was like, "What is this mess?" You know, what? And then I just turned them all off, and I found the interviews, and I started with the first one. Now, was that the Duchess interview? The or Duchess the one. You did watch that one. I watched the Duchess one. See, I didn't um, watch that until later. I didn't. The only time I went back is when Steve Johnson on uh, the interview room said, because he did the green shirt one. He's like, you really want to find the, the oldest interview. And I remember hearing about it, but I didn't hear the Duchess interview for months. Oh, that's the first one I watched. And um, I on went. That one? Um. My thoughts on all of them, and you know, initially, my my first thought was, why is he talking so much? And he, a couple of times, he blurted like, "No, we would have heard that," or, or you know, "We would have," or, and I'm like, "He what?" He said, "He." I thought he wasn't there, and I had to keep rewinding, and I'm like, "Okay, let me go into the next one," and. The rocking back and forth and the no tears and I'm like okay. so now we're on the green shirt interview now we're going to the green shirt and then this the, the whole the first time you got to see her her body behavior her facial yeah. expressions and everything like that now go ahead and and also the first change of the chain of events and I caught that immediately and I'm like wait a second and then I went back to the first and I'm like okay this is a child with a chromosome disorder who's just spent this crazy day and you go in there to wake him up early, but he's gone to dinner. You're talking about how he doesn't like to be clean. You know, he likes to be clean or he doesn't clean himself or whatever. Okay, straight. She went in to and woke him up, but he was gone. That's what she actually said in, I think it was that interview with the news channel. I went in and woke him up and he was gone. Because I thought, I'm gone. And I had to go back several times on that interview. Before I showed it on here, I went back several times and listened to that. I went back, I went in and woke him up. Well, how can you wake him up if he's not there? Big red flag. Straight away, that was. Whatever, and he's a 15-year-old boy. You never mentioned a bath. You never mentioned medication. You just told him to go to bed. So you sent him to school dirty and, wait, wait, okay. Hey, let's go to the next interview. And then so it changed. You that too. See, it did. It took me a little while before I realized that. If you notice, I've only started talking about that since I think May or or June. Well, I had a son that needed medication, and overstimulation during the day, and bathing had to be done at night because in the morning that that was an impossibility, and after a weekend, and especially a day like that. That would be a necessity because 15 year old boys sweat a lot and they do not smell pretty. And I don't see him getting up at 6 a.m. in the morning. And That's going not and enough time out. to have breakfast, take a bath. and Right. And, I mean, boys just don't do that. <laughs> no, they don't. But um, I mean, I'm just thinking these things as a mother when my son was 15 who had some issues and I'm thinking okay and in one interview that she had mentioned that she when he's not home she sleeps she's the dog sleep with her and then that changed completely and I'm, I'm like writing these things down I'm like this is not driving I'm like no this no I'm not going to believe this I'm not going there I I refuse and but he still kept controlling everything yeah, what what made you decide to look into this deeply because he was a relative of yours and you just wanted to help? Because I wanted to help. I wanted I wanted him found. I wanted him found for 
first, my aunt Suzanne, I, you know, I wanted him found for Katie. And then I, that, so I was digging. I'm like, okay, what can I find out that would help them? So I started with the interviews, like I said. And I, and then the Nancy Grace one, and I'm like, okay, I can't believe this. And my stomach just dropped. I'm like, now I want him found for my Aunt Suzanne and his dad because this man keeps controlling this whole interview and it, it is impossible to keep up with a lie. I know. Uh, it's like, I must admit, I'm not Nancy Grace. He didn't seem to control it that much because Nancy Grace wouldn't let him, wouldn't have let him. Right? So he was very uh, quiet, really, on that interview. Yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. Three bags full, ma'am. Sort of person. Right? Not this, I'm brash, I'm this, I'm that, but you know what I mean? Not the Chris we knew. Not the Chris we heard and seen. So, and I remember one time in that interview, she asked a question and Katie went to answer it and she said, for Chris, for Chris to answer, for Chris to answer, she said it three times. He said, oh, I'm sorry. Didn't realise he was talking to me or something like that, he said. I thought, that's unusual for you, Chris, because normally you're the first one in there. Right? She's having trouble keeping up with her story. So he's controlling this whole narrative. And then, you know, everything just got, he would call. I heard, I watched one thing where he called, I can't remember what channel it is, and I'm not going to mention any channels, pretending to be Billy Bob Thornton from Sling Blade. And like, what kind of person who's looking for their stepson does that? And then, Calling and I, I heard him on one channel where he was, he said something about, you know, screaming about the PI and threatening Seth's life over something that the PI did not release. It was another channel that released it about Katie's childhood, which I felt was not right. Mm -hmm. Nobody. True. Okay. It was another channel before that. Chat before web sleeps one, another channel had released that information about Katie, not the PI. All the PI said in that interview was, I've been given this information, but I'm not releasing it because it, I don't believe it's got anything to do with finding Sebastian, right? And then Chris goes. Who is it? Me, Seth, me, or Katie? Now, really, the PI should have said, I'm not saying. Right? She could have cut it off there and then and said, I'm not saying. But I think Chris would have gone, no, tell me. Tell me. Tell me who it was. Tell me who it's about. Right? So she goes, Katie. Then they go on to talk about a bit more about some hours. And then he goes, was this when Katie was younger and she she could have said, I don't want to talk about that, Chris. But she said, but we know what Chris is like. No, please tell me. So I think he'd have been like that. So she said, yes. That's all she said. But there was another channel before then that got that information and put that information. I don't know what they, I don't know if they put the full information out there or put little, like, make suggestions out there and to let you make your mo own mind up. I don't know what channel it was, but I know it was put out there. And, uh, and I thought he was out of order that night. Well out of order. He had anybody's, any business releasing that. 
that was her personal childhood and and that just wasn't right that wasn't nice it wasn't cool yeah it wasn't and, and how um, many of us creators would do that right now uh, for you know uh, go through I, these kind of details about a child i mean at the end of the day these things did happen we're not going to touch on it but these things did happen to her as a child and those were i mean having some knowledge about you know it might help get a history but the details that were being details released, should not be released that that was not right right to hold up pictures and no that was that was so wrong yeah. and i don't care who you are that's wrong you know to dig that up and show it right on the screen that's just that's below low uh -huh. and um So then I felt I had reached the point where I'm going to do all I can because I want to help my aunt Suzanne find her great grandson. Mm -hmm. And I just kept hearing these interviews and I would see these searches and then I would see everybody bashing Seth and I would never hear Katie come out and say anything different because I knew things were different back then, but she would never step up to the plate. And I hear these channels and people saying, you know, you should be working together. Um, I don't think it's Seth not working with them. I don't think they've ever, you know, I think they cut him off. So I, I did a video alive the other night and I was going, Katie needs to work with Seth. Work together. Put your disputes to one side and work together. And Chris, step the feck away. He's not your son. Step away. Let Katie do what she's got to do to find her son. But why won't she work with Seth? Why won't she? Because I think she knows where. She knows something more. She either knows where Sebastian is, or she knows what happened to Sebastian. Right? Because you think of how she was, and how she is now. She was so distraught. Within a week of him going missing, she's still so distraught. And then as time went on, she seemed to, uh, her whole demeanor seemed to change. And then she went to anger. She got angry. You could hear it in the background when Chris was on that web sleuth. You could hear in the background she was angry. And... I'm sitting here, and I'm listening and watching all these interviews they did. And I'm thinking, this reminds me of someone going through grief. The stages you go through. Right? First of all, it's like, no, no, this hasn't happened. This disbelief. And then you can have the sadness and the tears and all that lot. And then it's like, you can't believe this is happening. All this has happened, and then you have the anger, and then, you know what I mean? You have all these different stages you can go through, right? And that's how I felt Katie was doing. She was going through the stages that you go through with, in grief, when someone is passed, right? And... It's like she knows Sebastian isn't coming home. It's like she knew Sebastian wasn't coming home because she was grieving. She wasn't upset for a son who was missing. She was grieving. And that's totally different. Like, when, you, when you're upset, I just think if you're upset, if your child is missing... 
It'd be totally different. The way you behave, the way you acted would be totally different to if your child was banned or, or if your child had died. I just that's just me. I just think you have different ways of coping, right? Like if your child's missing, you're determined you're out there, you wrong his name out there, you wrong his picture out there, you're looking for him, you're doing everything, you're on the news channels, you're on this you're in the papers, you're on everything, right? You get his name out there and you keep his name out there. But when a child has died all you want to do is to be left alone. And that's what she wanted. She wanted to be left alone. She didn't want to do all these YouTube interviews. That's why I think in that one interview we see in the first one, the rocking back and forth, I said, then, that is like, she knows something and she wants to tell, say something, but she can't. And it's like, she didn't want to be there. It's like, I've, I've done the same when I've been in a position. I've sat there rocking back and forth because I don't want to be there. And, I'm, and it's going through my head and I'm going, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be here. And I sit there and I've sat there rocking back and forth. So I think she, was, she knew then Sebastian wasn't coming home. Or perhaps thought Sebastian wasn't coming home. Perhaps he could be coming home. We don't know. Perhaps that's what she's been told. We don't know. They did. They did. And Tony yeah. was trying to be a spokesperson for all of them for a united front. You know, my ex-husband and I, we, with our two children, yeah, we each had spouses at the time that just didn't like the fact if we ever talked together. But if anything happened to our children, you can bet we would have been in the same room 24-7. Find him. Find him, find her. There would have been no lack of communication. Mm -hmm. And when I... When I was listening, I'd listen to all of these. Now, some of them I just couldn't stand to listen to. I, it just got to the point. There were a few that I just couldn't tolerate for more than five minutes. And I'd turn it off. And I'm like, I cannot listen to this. Mm -hmm. But I would go to, go to bed at night and just pray, you know, let me get through another day. And then I'd do some more research and I'd watch some more interviews. You know, people would call in a sighting. And I think it was May 2nd. Somebody called in a, a sighting. And immediately, Chris would call in and say, yeah, I, I heard somebody just called and said they saw they had a sighting and and the lady was being very politeful. And he said, well, let me give you the other end of the story. I'm Chris Proudfoot. You know, and he was automatically debunking the, sa the sighting. Who does that? Yeah. Yeah, I remember. He did that with the site, possible sighting in. North Car in Carolina, right, at the old man's mountain, is he? He said straight away, it's not Sebastian. How do you know it's not Sebastian? How do you know? And this is what gets me so mad with the law enforcement there, some of the county sheriff's office. Why are they not picking up on all this? We are. So how can... They say, no, no, there's nothing wrong there, nothing wrong in that family, everything goes, okay, nothing to be seen here. You know what I mean? How can it be like that? How can as someone say, definitely, without even looking or going down there or speaking to anyone about, no, it's not him. No. So... Some email. remember that a couple times. You're right. I, I almost forgot about that. You know, who does that? How do you know it wasn't a sighting? This is like in Georgia, May 2nd. Mm -hmm. Come on. You know, 
And I wonder, you know, are they just sitting there watching all of these channels? And I've heard him a few times say some of the most horrible things. Yeah. And she doesn't speak. And the final thing for me was seeing her in court. The look on her face. I cried. Describe what you think that look meant for you. That look on her face looked like somebody who was just so self-satisfied. Mm -hmm. Just the look of, huh? I mean, she, at one point, even Chris turned back to her to say something and she just didn't even look at him and she said something to him and he even looked like a puppy. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, she just looks like she is so proud of herself. And the queen... And she is right where she wants to be. And not me. Look at her face there. Hmm. Yeah. I'm getting what I want. Is she looking at Chris? Or is she looking at someone else over? She's probably looking at when Bullock BHB was standing up. She's probably looking over at BHB thing. Because he's sitting further back, and, but then later on, a few minutes later or so, he comes forward to the front. She gets up and goes out or whatever, and then comes back in, obviously. But he goes to the front, and he, you see him leaning forward, talking to the solicitor, and he's, he was not happy. He sat back, and his face was like thunder. He was not happy about it. But look at the look on that face. It's like, hmm, I've got you right where I want you now. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. It bothered, it, it bothered me so much. And. All of these channels were live casting it and just drooling over, you know, I wasn't you going to jail or whatever. And I'm like, what is going on? What I want more than anything, and for I can't see the chat. I don't know what anybody's saying. I quite honestly, that is that doesn't bother me. What I want is for this stuff to stop and for people to light everything up green and find this boy. Alive, not alive, bring some closure or bring that boy home to his dad, to his family, to his grandmother. I mean, his great grandmother. He deserves it. Right. And <coughs> quit <coughs> twisting words, quit manipulating words. I can't say for certain if anybody in my family has them i do not believe they do i do not believe anybody would do that mm -hmm. um but she can't say for certain you know that, she that does be. have a couple of stepsisters and like three stepbrothers mm -hmm. a couple in california you know she does have a lot of friends and stuff in down in georgia maybe he is somewhere but he will never be the same little boy because if he is somewhere he's being hold on didn't she say just say she had friends hold on hold on boy home to his dad to his family to his grandmother i mean his great grandmother he deserves it right and 
quit twisting words, quit manipulating words. I can't say for certain if anybody in my family has them. I do not believe they do. I do not believe anybody would do that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, she does have a couple of stepsisters and like three stepbrothers. Mm -hmm. couple in California, you know, she does have a lot of friends and stuff in down in Georgia. Down in Georgia. Friends and stuff down in, 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 down in, down in Georgia. Now, didn't I just mention that the, there was a sighting of Sebastian in Georgia? And it turned out not to be him? Hmm. Maybe he is somewhere, but he will never be the same little boy. No, he won't. Because if he is somewhere, he's being told a whole lot of stories. Gotcha. And he can't hide forever, which is why I just... I pray for Seth, I pray for Sebastian, I pray for clarity and for peace. For God's sakes, people, please, this is about Sebastian. This is not about hate. Amen. Quit with the hate. All of, all of the YouTubers, just stop. All of this Facebook stuff, just stop. Just look for him. Yeah. And I don't, you know, I do I believe... Sumner County Sheriff's Department, honest opinion, no. I've not seen one shred that makes me believe that they did anything. No. Where I live. I feel kind of too. To be where I you. live in Virginia, mm -mm, that would not have taken. Well, maybe not here. I live in a good old boy town here in Washington County, Virginia. But when I, where I grew up in Virginia Beach, that would not have happened. Yeah. You said something, if you don't mind, I just got a couple of questions. You said right where she won. You guys didn't grow up with a whole lot of money, did you? No, no. Lord, no. You know, our parents were born and raised in this little teeny town in southwest Virginia called Damascus. They Migrated to Norfolk, Virginia. We were all born and raised in the Norfolk, Chesapeake, Virginia Beach area. And our parents worked hard for what we got. We had what we needed. Not a, not a whole lot of what we wanted. And we, we had, none of us had money. And we had to work. You know, I started working when I was 16, went to school. I worked at McDonald's and I was on the field hockey team. So... We were constantly, we had to earn our own money, but no, we did not grow up with any wealth whatsoever. And what was she thinking about her lifestyle now? Oh, Lord. She, that's something she wasn't, she's not going to leave that. A, a lifestyle of a, that is like 500 times bigger and better than anything we would have ever imagined as children <laughs> more than 500. So it makes you think, was there an ultimatum by Chris? He gave her an ultimatum when they first met and decided to move in together. Get rid of the cats, see with the cats or me. So what does she do? Oh, yeah, she got rid of Sebastian's cats. Right? Was there another ultimatum? This isn't working with Sebastian. It's either me or Sebastian. And as the relative said, just said, she's not going to give that up, that lifestyle up. Right? She's got a good job. She's got a good pension from the Navy. Whatever. Right? She's got a nice house, possibly money in the bank, we don't know. But she's got a good lifestyle compared to what she had when she grew up. 
and what she wanted, she got when she was little. So that carries on in life when you grow up, when people are like that. What you want, you get. They normally do as they get older. I want this house. I want to be living here. I want this sort of house. You know what I mean? So she gets what she wants and she's not going to give that up. So did she give her son up instead? Did she give her son up? Did she choose Chris over Chris and the lifestyle that she's got over her son? Not saying she did. I'm just saying, could she have? The relatives just said she got everything she ever wanted. Sort of thing. Way more. Now, I believe you 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 stated this, but just um, because I missed it, and I apologize. I don't want to rehatch anything that might be um, a little sensitive. But at what what was the defining factor that started making you doubt? the story between, uh, you know, about Sebastian? Was it just the interviews or was it something else? Um, the interviews, one interview, the, you know, it was, well, I woke up, went in there in his bedroom to wake him up about six o'clock. He wasn't there. You know, I called Chris, you know, I can't find him. Within three, you know, he three-wayed the, he called Sumner County Sheriff's. Within three minutes, the police were lined up down the street. You know, she checked the closets and stuff. But within three minutes, the police were lined all the way down the street. You know, it was specifics, details. You know, three minutes, they were here. I called him. Next one, you know, I got up. I went in his room. To, he wasn't there. You know, I Another thing someone points pointed out is the number three. Three minutes to look for him. A three-way phone call. What else for three? There's several other times number three came into conversation. I got to go back for all the please don't make me go back for all those interviews again because I'm not. I can't do it. I'd end up in a mental institution if I had to go back for all those interviews again. Right? But the number three comes up quite a lot. And people, someone said, they pick, they say a number like three or something like that. So, like, it keeps them, so they, they don't forget the story. Don't forget, three minutes you called me, three minutes, three way phone call, three this, three that. You know what I mean? And so, so it's that number, that number they use is just to keep them in line with what they're supposed to say so they don't forget. It's like a checklist. Yep. Tick that one off. Yep, got that one off. Yep, got that one. You know what I mean? It's like the tick, ticking off a checklist by saying, keeping that number three in mind. So they don't, so when they giving out their version of what happened, they don't miss anything. They don't forget anything. So, let's continue. I looked around the house, thought he might have been in the kitchen, and I'm like, no, that you would have seen that. And so I got in my car and I called him, and I was driving around in three way, you know, three I, we three way the sheriff's department. I'm like, wait, you just said you didn't leave home, and he was there in three min. The police were there in three minutes. What's this about you driving around looking and him telling you to hurry up and get home? So you ran home. Home, or you mean you drove home? That's in everything. She said, and I ran home, uh, drove home. You ran home, yeah, at three o'clock in the morning. We seen that light going really quick back to the house.
，是吧？听见没？别听到我讲。Oh, I think it's not. Well, God damn it, man! Got me winking, shit as well. Right, so it's I. I think she's getting that confused. Like, get get back home because she's out in the car. Get back up. She just for a split second. Got confused and said, rang home. What really she meant to say, drive home because she got confused from earlier on at three o'clock in the morning. There's the other three. That's the other three. Three o'clock in the morning. There's another three. I'm going to have to write down all these threes so that I don't forget them. And then the no medicine, no bath, <coughs> and then the thud in the last one, and the polygraphs, and it was too many lies, too many changes. And he kept controlling the interviews because every time she spoke, the story changed, and it seemed to change with what was going on online. If, if you compare the interviews to what people were saying online, you know, the trash can. There was a video of the trash can. So the next story, uh, oh, he had chores. So I sent him out to take the trash. Well, that had. Right. And another thing that she brought into the conversation, the storyline, was his keychain torch. I believe on the Wednesday, after the police had seen this video with the lights, They've asked her if he had a torch with him. If a torch had gone missing. And they went, no. But he, did, he does normally he does normally have a keychain torch. And it'd be the size of your palm of your hand. That's how big the torch would be. And it's only after that that they brought the keychain torch into the storyline as well had been posted on video so that was integrated into her story and i'm like Sh she can't keep up with what she's told people and i was just writing these notes and i'm looking back and forth and back and forth and i'm like and my it, it was like my whole body froze i'm like oh my god what have they done what has happened why and and that that was my question the whole why and then i see those custody papers and i knew those words were lies you know they, they put all that on the custody papers but then as soon as she, you know she goes back to her mother they put the they were in such danger from you and i'm like again what is going on this is i gotta tell you one of the uh, most uh, this is a weird experience for me. I can tell you that. I don't really know what to say other than that. I have I've never, you know, I have never followed. I'm not a big YouTube follower. I don't watch these things. And you know, do I watch investigation discovery? Of course, every woman does. But I'm not one of those deep crime divers or anything. But I got in this. Christ, I fall asleep listening to crime investigations. And you know what they say about women who watch crime 24-7 fall asleep listening to crime? Don't feck around with them. And I'm telling you now, they don't want to feck around with me. Because I will bury you and I won't be able to find any evidence. Honest. I think I could bury someone without leaving any evidence around. I think. I'd have to work on it. Not really. Because Sebastian is blood of my blood, basically. And I happen to love my Aunt Suzanne dearly. And 
I have been sick just watching this and seeing, you know, they leave, they go, what, two and a half, three weeks after, he, not even that, he's missing. And then, oh, he can be anywhere by now. No, as a mother, if my child, I don't care if my child was 30 years old, as a mother, I would not leave. If you could have been anywhere and you went down there to wherever Mississippi or wherever it was you first went to, why didn't you let law enforcement know? Hey, Katie. Why did law enforcement not know about Sebastian going missing? Because law enforcement would be the first place I go to in any county, any state. I would go, I went into, I go to the police, law enforcement first and let them know. Do you know that? This child is missing. No. Okay. Well, his name is Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. He's 15 years old. He's autistic. And he's been missing since the Febu 15, 26th of February this year. Can I leave a flyer here for you to put up on your... Or put up somewhere? Can you let your police officers, your sheriffs, know about this? But she didn't. She didn't go to anything like that. Because when a certain YouTube was doing a search of an old, abandoned, decrepit house that was falling apart, just across the road from the um, cavern park they were staying, right? They weren't there at the time when he did the search, I believe. But it was just across the road from where they were staying. Law enforcement knew nothing about Sebastian being missing. But he could be anywhere, Katie says, but she doesn't even let law enforcement know. Okay, Katie. I would have my cell of phone planted more, like, get you to my ear. And if I wasn't home, as soon as I got home, my porch light would be on and I would be, I would never leave my house. Much less go camping. You know, he, he said he had to go back to work, but he had just said that he was told not to go back until this was all done. It was lie after lie and leave the house. And they've been vacation since then. You know, she went to Myrtle Beach, you know, they've been to Louisiana. And I'm like, this is not how people with missing children behave. See, Louisiana, Myrtle Beach. I bet she never went to their police or law enforcement down there and said to any of them and gave them a flyer. Bet she didn't. Apparently, you know, to me, it just, in my opinion, it's like they know he's not coming home. Because I would, feel? if I start crying now on your show, I will not stop. So I'm, I'm going to say that. Okay. It's sick to me. It makes me, it makes me sick. When I was know. the last time you spoke to Francis? Um, before she went away. Okay, so you haven't spoken to her any time recently since she's been out or No, I take that back. I did see her when Don passed, my Uncle Don passed away. Oh, so she was out at that time? Yes. Did Katie speak to her mother at all? Yeah. Do you know if they have regular communications to this day? Um, I can't say for certain, but it's it appears to me they do. Did Sebastian speak with her at all that you saw? Well, yes. at, the, at the funeral. Yeah. Did you ever hear rumors whether he maintained that communication with his grandmother or not? Well, they're in, you know, Suzanne and Francis are right there together. So if they're FaceTiming, they, I'm sure 
it would be mutual. Gotcha. So she's still because Sue's Aunt Suzanne is is one of her favorite aunts as well. In my, Aunt in Suzanne my is Aunt Suzanne is Katie's grandmother. Grandma, why do you why do you keep mixing it up, aunts and I'm sorry, I apologize. Because I apologize. they're my aunts. They're my aunt and uncle. Oh, that okay, got it, got it. I'm, but I'm, they're Katie's grandparents. Gotcha, gotcha. So and then that was her favorite grand because she was very close to her grandfather oh. and, and Aunt Suzanne was his wife. Yeah. Got it, got it. Yeah, my uncle Don was a wonderful, wonderful man. He could play the guitar too. See, we grew up when we were little on Fridays, we would be a couple of my aunts and uncles, my uncle Don and another aunt of mine, my aunt Betty, they all lived in the same little apartment complex and all the cousins, aunts and uncles, we'd go there and my dad and a couple of my uncles, they would play guitar and we would all run around the neighborhood. That was the fun night out. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was no extravagance. That's, and all the way up. That's how we were. Did Katie play an instrument? I don't think so. Okay. Does Katie have anything to do with your side of the family anymore? Um, she does with Aunt Suzanne. And she did go to Aunt Suzanne's wedding. Um, I think that was in 2020 in North Carolina. She did go to that. Um, so yeah, her aunt and uncle and Suzanne and yeah, she does them, but she doesn't really, I guess because she left and she really doesn't know many of us anymore. I mean, she just, they kind of tucked her away when she went to live with her dad and her aunt, they kind of tucked her away from us. I mean, she would, when she was at Don's funeral, she, you know, we had to reintroduce, it was like reintroducing ourselves to her. We never forgot about her. It was always, we'd see uncle Don and aunt Suzanne, how's Katie doing? How's Katie doing? What's she up to? And we would get updates. Oh, she's graduating. She's going to culinary school. She's doing great. And then, Oh, she, she got married and, She's moving to Georgia or she moved to Georgia to get married. And, and then we found out, you know, a year and a half later that she had had Sebastian because her uncle and his wife, their daughter is like three months older than Sebastian. So they had kids the same year. How so we were up coping with all this um not just sebastian's disappearance but the, the craziness of this case silence just everything they're just silent un unnervingly silent and i know they're paying attention to it that see that just keeps coming back to me why is her side of the family so darn quiet about this Sebastian about Sebastian being missing why I'd be if I found out right uh, a relative of mine right their child had gone missing and I've got cousins right who I'll keep in touch with and if I find out that one of their children, or even one of their grandchildren now, had gone missing, I'd be on that case. I'd be saying, look, send us some fly, like in the UK, it's, it's not like in the US, and it should be, like, when a child goes missing, they don't get flyers out straight away. And it can take maybe a few days or so before flyers are put out. I'm thinking, no, no. get flyers out the same day, get a photo, get it printed up onto a, and get it printed off and get copies. You know what I mean? Get flyers put up within 24 hours of that child going missing. 
because within tw 24 hours is a long time and that child could be anywhere within 24 hours, especially in the UK. In 24 hours, they could be up. If you live in England, right, they could be up the top end of Scotland within 24 hours. Right? Or the bottom end of Wales. Bottom end of the UK. So within 24 hours, it could be at the top end of the UK, United Kingdom, or at the very bottom end of the UK. Or even on a boat or ferry over to Ireland, Northern Ireland. Or even a boat or ferry over to France, Belgium, Europe, within 24 hours. Because we've got a tunnel now, which you, you take your car, you drive on onto a train thing, and this train will take you through a tunnel and you disembark the other end into France. Thump, within an hour, an hour and a half, whatever, you're in France. And that tunnel goes under the ocean. So you can either go by car that way or you can go by ferry, where you can drive onto a ferry. Right? I'd like to go on a car through that tunnel with a life jacket. And anything else that I needed <laughs> in case the tunnel gave away. You know what I mean? In case there's some cracks in there somewhere. But that is how quick a child could be out of the UK. So I would be on it. As soon as I heard it, I'd from, be on Facebook, on my Facebook page, it'd be on a, my YouTube channel. I'd be Twitter, on my X account, on my Instagram account, on my TikTok account. I'd have flyers, I'd make my own flyers up and get them printed off, put up in Scotland. I've got people I know, which I could probably find out again on Facebook, find them on Facebook again, get in touch with them and say, if I send you some flyers, can you put these up in your area? You know what I mean? I would get my son to drive me up to every flipping time I could on a day off, he's got a day off. Take me to every time you can. Let's get some flies ev everywhere. Right? And I would do that. And I'd make it loud. I'd make it so loud that everyone would know about that child going missing in my family. Everyone. But for a family who so apparently comes together when anything happens, to be so quiet... Hmm, makes me think. Gets my mind wandering places I don't want it to go. No, I do know. I, my cousin on the east coast of North Carolina, I've seen her name listed on like some Duchess things, but I don't know. I've not heard a word. No Facebook posts, no nothing. be right back i feel like this next question is already answered and um but just to clarify after watching katie and her behavior in the multiple interviews and i don't want you to accuse anybody or anything like that but do you you know since her son's been missing do you believe she's hiding something based on the behaviors you saw in those interviews Um, in my, in my opinion, yes, I think she's hiding a lot. And I think that Chris would probably do anything to make sure she's never able to come you know express that all by herself with somebody he she, she even believes she's holding back on something she it like seth he he hasn't put her down he's not put katie down down like oh she's a bad mother well he has he has i suppose because he did say, once again, 
she's not doing a job as a mother and keeping an eye on her son, on her son. You know what I mean? He has said things like that. But he said from the beginning, at the very beginning, she's holding back on something. And he can't get to her. Because Chris is in between Seth and Katie. Chris is not letting Seth anywhere near Katie. And I think that time when Katie was back home, when she went away at the first time, she come back home. And while she was home, the TBI called them up to the office, both Katie and Seth. And that was the day you see the video of Sebastian walking out of the Texas Roadhouse. Right? And I don't think Chris would have been happy about Katie and Seth being together with TBI, the FBI, the district attorney, the sheriff's office and all this stuff. He would not have been happy about her being there without him. He would not have been happy. He is in control of the narrative at this point. He seems like he is... He will protect her. And she will, I don't think she's going to. Now, if I think if anybody could get through to her, if she was hiding anything, it would be my Aunt Suzanne. Lord knows if my Uncle Dom were alive today. I think he's probably rolling in his grave right now, but um, he would. he would know but if anybody in this family would know or could find out it would be my, probably my aunt Suzanne gotcha. but in my opinion I think she's hiding a lot and gotcha. there's, there's a lot to be found out but I don't think that local law enforcement area is ever going to do that so and I don't think Chris will allow it yeah, and you know, you knew Seth for a little. Are you you no. recently known Seth? You didn't know him personally when they got together or no. married. Like, I have never met him in person. I, I'm only from the wedding from him asking permission, but I've never met him. I knew. What do you think about him going through everything that he's been going through online. Oh my gosh. All the things that they say about him. Um, even though you don't know him, I'm sure you you still knew of him and the relationship between him and Katie. What do you what say you about these crazy bully campaigns? These oh I don't my know gosh. what else to call them. What say I? Um, people, I guess people have nothing better to do with their lives, but he is, he's, you know, he's not out there smearing the mother of his child. He did. You know, he's. And nobody wants, if Sebastian's alive, nobody wants to hear that. Mm -hmm. And he is getting drugged through the mud over lies. You know, he, you know, that, that this whole grooming thing blows my mind. When I heard that, I was like, no, that's not true. And why do you say that? She had a boyfriend. And this this is just sickening. You know, they're going to make up just because they got married when she was 18 and moved to Georgia. Nobody knows what was going on at the time when they left. I do. Anything I'm going to divulge because quite personal, quite honestly, these were terrible things. And it's nobody's business. And I am not here to bash or talk 
about personal situations in her life or his life or anybody's life because you know what that's not what this is about yeah. and that particular time probably was a very difficult time for Katie but it wasn't him grooming right and she was over 18 you know no and she graduated from green run high school i know that and was in culinary school and was a chef at a nice fancy restaurant at the oceanfront so don't you know he's not out there bashing her and what gets me is she's not out there correcting it because it's a hate it seems like a hate mission it seems like i'm not done ruining you yet i could be wrong but that's my opinion it just seems like it's one thing after the next because there's so much that could be said well that's it you see i mean i keep stopping and i've still got other videos to show but she's not saying anything about sticking up for Seth she's not coming forward and saying look you need to stop this there's nothing involved like that with me and Seth right there was an incident that happened in the family and that is it got nothing to do with me or Seth or to do with Seth, right? But she doesn't come forward and she doesn't put a stop to all these nasty, vile women, which could hurt him with his job. You know what I mean? It could look bad. He's in the, uh, he works in a, for the police, law enforcement, in a, in a jail. Right? Where they take them before they go while they're in court and all that lot. Or where they just bend until they get bonded out. Yeah? This, all those nasty, vile rumours going about is not, will not help his job. And that is not fair on Seth. If Sebastian is found alive, Seth will need his job. Right? He'll need his job. And for people to go about putting out these malicious, nasty rumours is not on. I've not listened to any of them. Because I don't listen to certain, a lot of channels. I don't. And if I hear anything coming up in a channel, I, and I'm on a channel, I switch it off. Don't want to know it. Right? And sometimes I even just look at the title of their live or the title of their video. I'm thinking, not, not interested. It's got to stop. And Katie needs to step up and say, look, stop this. She didn't like it when it was being said about her. And now she's encouraging it to be said about Seth. It plays both way, ways, girl. You know what I mean? So you didn't like it when things were being said about you, which was out of order. I totally agree. It was out of order. Which out of order what they've been saying about Seth. And it is the hate channels. I don't watch them. I don't listen to them. Right? And if I go on a YouTube channel and I'm listening to one of these hate channels, just like I'm listening to this, just to discuss what they've been saying, I, I don't want to take part in it. I'll just switch it off. I don't, I don't want to even listen to that, these hate channels. I don't. So, but I just can't get over Katie. I can't. That she could be saying, and we don't hear it. Mm -hmm. You know, why she can't 
work with him work you know can't we all just get along for a lack of a better phrase can't we all just get along for the sake of this beautiful little boy and the only conclusion i can come up with is because there seems to be a total lack of concern on one side in my opinion what's that saying you don't look for something something that isn't lost that's why she's not looking plus she's got chris as well stopping her he's but i don't think she's strong willed she said that herself the relative here she's strong-minded I can't see how she would let Chris tell her, don't you do this, don't you go out looking, don't you team up with Seth and don't you do this. Because she's got her own mind, she's got her own mindset. So, is it Chris stopping her or is it just her not wanting to? And that's terrifying. And you've been bottling a lot of stuff up. I mean, you're you're fairly emotional about this. Only because it's like I said, this our family has gone through major rifts, major I mean, some terrible things in the past. We really have. And but we usually yeah we come back together. I, I would fight tooth and nail for my family. And I wish I was on your show right now fighting tooth and nail for my family. Now, this doxing and making up lies about my family, I will fight tooth and nail for my family. And I don't care what anybody says about me. I am just me. I'm just speaking for me. But I I wish I could say there's absolutely no way she did anything. And that's what's killing me. So I can't say that. If I if I had if I had different words I would use them, you know, I just wish everybody would just take a step back, you know, read his name, just look at his name and only look at his name. Stop taking the low road. Stop being dirty, hateful, nasty and read his name. I remember he's somewhere out there and he needs to be brought to where he's supposed to be. And it's, you know, nobody's going to find him calling people ugly names or accusing people of ugly things and doxing and bashing. That's not going to work. It's not going to bring him home. No, it's not. And hating the father and and but not understanding that the father's trying and has tried to talk to the mother there's silence on one side you know come together i, I you know, everybody all these channels all these creators all these facebook people just stop the hate Show some love. Say a prayer. Find him. We're not, nobody's going to find him if everybody's just focused on hating each other and being ugly. And it's so disappointing. That day when you were in court and I was watching, yeah, I flipped it on and I think everybody had streamed court tv and they were like drooling not me and i just turned it off i was like okay this is the lowest anything could ever get that nobody's talking about sebastian nobody 
no sense in even watching anything. Nobody is talking. You know, first of all, there's no updates from any law enforcement. And I don't think there ever will be, other than maybe hopefully my hope came in when Dog and Nick joined in. Yeah, that is. That, I I think they're a blessing because there's been so many people that have been praying for this case, and it's uh -huh. like you know, right from left field, they just swooped in. We got the fifty thousand from FBI, and then the next thing we know, we got Dog and Nick. And I got to be honest with you, I was a little skeptical, but you know, I, I welcome the support. I welcome um, mm -hmm. their their skill set. I welcome their you know, the research team, I welcome their legal team. I mean, they just bring a lot to the table. Just, you know, and I keep my ears open. You know, I send messages to family members and see what comes back. And it's just casual. And I'm like, what? So don't think I'm not still digging. I will continue to dig. I will continue to hope and my, the reason for my post again, going back to that is because I lost faith in a member of my family and, and you know, we don't have to be close to be family. And just seeing it and seeing it and doing my research and watching all the details and paying attention to the details and knowing that, okay, this doesn't make sense and that there's no way you did that and you don't ever stimulate a child and then shoe go to bed and I thought you slept with the dogs and you put the dogs up. You created them? Wait, that's not what you said. And, you know, and it was like a steady. Sorry, my internet must be playing up. What's going on? Steady sinking into a hole. Because I truly came into this. I'm going to help Katie find that child. And it did not take me long to sink into the hole of, oh my gosh, she knows where he's at. I think she, I think she knows where he's at. <coughs> and then it was like, oh my gosh, I hope it was an accident. But the more Chris talked, the more I felt I just need to focus on finding him because I don't think there's going to be anything from that side. And for everybody in the chat, focus on finding him. Don't focus on hating anybody. Just focus on loving that boy. Pray for his father. Pray for everybody involved and pray for Sebastian. Is there anything that you would like to, if you had an opportunity to say, to say something to Seth, is there anything you would like to say to Seth? Oh, now I'm going to cry. Um, wow. Wow. I cannot imagine what it would be like 24 seven wondering where your baby is. I know I wouldn't be sleeping. I probably wouldn't be eating. I would be wondering if they were eating, but take care of yourself because when he is found, regardless, you will need your heart, body, and soul to take care of everything else. If you, you have got to have faith in God, 
love yourself. Remember that sweet face. And dear God, don't give up. Don't give up your love and your hope. And no matter where he is, he knows you love him. He knows you. He knows his dad. Nothing will ever change that. But take care of yourself. You're no good to anybody if you can't take care of yourself too. Yeah. And I am I'm praying ready. for you. Yeah. Thank you. And I'm saying if you had an opportunity to say anything you'd like to to Sebastian, what would that be? Oh. Sweet thing. This is heartbreaking. If you are out there, Lord, let us know. Find find somewhere to call. Call your daddy. Call your great great grandma. And if something has happened to you, your great grandpa's up there. Just you're loved by so many more than you could ever imagine. And we're praying for you. And green's my favorite color too. <laughs> I know this has been very hard for you. Like I said, I knew that this was going to be hard coming into this. You and I have, you know, discussed uh, this. Uh, oh my God. Is there is there anything that I didn't cover? Is there anything that you would like to get off your chest about this case or about something else that I just didn't ask you or anything? Um, I'm sure there's plenty, but like I said, I'm, I'm, I didn't post that expecting it to go so crazy wild. Yeah. But I am glad I did it. Um, I just want people to take the focus off of themselves and to realize this isn't about old fights, new fights, bickering, whatever. It's about finding the sweet boy and, you know. This case is not about clicks and views. This case is about a 15-year-old autistic lad who went missing on the 26th of February. His name is Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers. And that's the only team you need to be on, it's Sebastian's team, Team Sebastian. Not Team Seth, not Team Katie, not Team Chris, not Team anyone, just Team Sebastian. I, I always thought Respect was out there. And I've seen so much disrespect since March. And unwarranted disrespect. But I've also seen so much love from so many people. That if we could just keep that love growing and keep looking and support dog, support Nick... Support Betty, you know, I support you, Betty. I'm going to say that loud and clear. I have watched this from the beginning and the whole, everything has just angered me with, and nobody is trying to take his name out of other people's mouths, but they're sure trying to take it out of yours. Mm -hmm. And his name should be in everybody's mouth everywhere his picture should be in everybody's mind everywhere 
It should be ingrained. It should be posted everywhere. He's missing. And he needs to come home. And that's all that matters. And I see. So That's I did want to let you know that the chat is really rooting for you. Um, oh. <laughs> yes, they they stand behind you. They just wanted the um, ginger girl says, please let her know the chat supports her. We admire her strength in speaking out. Um, uh, dear Sebastian, we love you and can't wait to find you. Know that you matter and have a place in this world. And then we have, um, I can't ask that question, Justin. <laughs> uh, Justin has a question. It, I, I, I can't ask that question at the time being, but. Um, I'm not, I can see it on there and I'm not going to even answer that question. We lose ball home Betty for a minute or so here because she clicked something on her mouse and took her out. <laughs> I must admit, I remember when I first started doing my YouTube channel and I was going live. I was so scared to click on anything. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I hit a button on my mouse and it took me all the way back. Oh, that's okay. But I saw that question and I was saying I'm, I w I'm not even going to answer that question. Yeah, I appreciate it. No. About that. And then I got back in here and I hit the same button on my mouse again. It took me back out. So, yeah, I've never had that happen before. I do appreciate it. I, I do appreciate it. Uh, Yada, I'm, I'm glad that you um, came here and I thought you handled this with love. You know, you, you, you have things that are bothering you and that are, that are inside. And I think you handled this with grace. Um, I appreciate you trusting me to interview you. Um, and I didn't want to pry too much. And we did want to make sure that we were utmost respectful, but we're able to um, get your thoughts out there. I hope I did well. I hope um, oh. you're pleased with the way we ran this. And I hope I didn't push too much. That wasn't my intention. You did not. And I hope everybody knows that I am not doing this, any of this for me. Right. Um, I'm just getting this point across, you know, because of that, I made that post and I've gotten wonderful support and I've gotten terrible hate. And that post is because that's how I feel as being part of this family. And this isn't for me. This is for Sebastian. So. And thank you so much, Betty, for having me on here. And Absolutely. thank you, everybody, for listening. And yes. thank you for coming up here. And thank you for sharing your story again. I know it was very, very, very difficult. If you want to go take a breather, I'm just going to go ahead and close out the show. I thank just, you. Thank you so much for giving me your time. And letting me pry a little bit and letting the whole world, you know, kind of hear your, your thoughts um, on what's been going on. So thank you so much for handling it with love and grace. You have a blessed evening. You too, my dear. All of you. Good night. God bless. Right. Wow. Um, right. Well, wow. that was the interview. I, I wanted to... Like, I didn't come on over the weekend because I needed to catch up on some videos, some YouTube videos to watch. And I saw this one. I thought, wow, 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 wow. No, I'm not going live. I'm not going live. I can't do it. I'm not. I just didn't have it in me to sit and go live. I couldn't do it. So, and I also saw the other interview with dog the bounty hunter and i was going to discuss that one i thought you know what no i'm not because i didn't find that so we didn't find anything new about it apparently um a woman was threatened and 
dog's being threatened and this one's being threatened. It's all about threats. And I'm sorry, I don't want to hear about that. Right? We know there are people out there putting threats out. We know that. So until FBI or law enforcement do something about that, there's nothing. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about Sebastian. Right? So anyway, another video I saw was, hold on, let me just get rid of this. Um, I've got to go to my Facebook because I've actually shared it on my Facebook so I can find it quicker. Let's pause it. Oh. Warren expands, right. This is a video of the News Channel 5 on the 27th of February, the day after Sebastian was reported missing. Now, I am going to speed it up because it is like... 42 minutes long. Playback speed one. No, we want it about. So that. And if you listen, right, that's what you hear. So I'm going to take the sound off because that sound can be a bit annoying. So we've got to speed it up. But Okay, let's see if I can get it any bit wider. Enter. That's it. All right. Now, this is the day after Sebastian has gone missing. And as you can see, this is the... Hold on. Oh, God. Let's go back a minute. Let's just go back. There. Yeah. That's the construction site, right? This is Kelling Lane. And this is the road where Sebastian lives. And that's his house here. There's the white van. And I can't make that car out. I think it might be Chris's truck. Right? And there's a, a car out the front. A couple of cars there. They could be law enforcement, you know what I mean? Or even Seth. Right? But where's all the searches? Yeah? Where's all the searches? You're telling me the police have done all their searching along this road, have been and spoke to every neighbour from the Monday to the Tuesday. They've spoke to everyone. There's no one about. No one. Oh, uh, hold on. I just want to go back to this. There's no one about. I mean, I'm going to stop it because we get what? Well, it was round here, the car was parked. All right, we know that because this camera caught the car. So it's round about here. The lights were seen cutting over this drainage thing, whatever they call it and heading to this area here. Why, when the car pulled up there, did it go round there? We do not know. Does not make sense to me. But there's always a reason behind doing something, so there must have been a reason for that car to go and park there. Because then it reversed back up here, and the people got in the car. Or it reversed to here and the people got... Somewhere along here, they got in the car. 
and then you see the other light running back over there, jumping that ditch or going over there a lot quicker than where it came. Because going back, they was on the road. They didn't have no one with them. But look, where's all the police? Where's all the police? Right? Where's all the flipping? Is that a place? That's one police car there. One police car on the 27th parked up on that road. Maybe one outside the house, we don't know. We can really see it clearly. But where's all the searches? I've got this speeded up, so this is going a bit quicker than what I would normally. I, I can slow it down a bit. I've got it to 1.5. I can take it to there. Right, now, this is the command centre place where every, all the police and the searchers were meeting up. Right? That's the uh, fire station. So you've got all them people there. And look, this is what got me. Why are they sitting at a table there? If this is the command centre van, where all the information goes into, why are they sitting at a table here? Right, but you, I can't see any searches in the films. I know the trees are quite thick and whatever, but I can't see any searches anywhere. That guy's watching the helicopter. Why are they sitting up? Oh, let's go, for, go back again. I'm going to stop it because I'm, I'm just dumbfounded by this. I can't understand why they'd be sitting there at a table. Why are you zooming in a minute? Why are they sitting at a table? What are they doing there? Who is it? Who's sitting at the table and why? Hmm, a lot of cars, a lot of police, a lot of cars, I just, I just can't understand that while they're sitting there. What are they doing there? A lot of people standing around talking, but nothing's getting done there. You know what I mean? Just talking, talking, talking. But look, there's no one, no searches. You'd see them even in them trees. I know they're quite thick because they haven't got branches on, right? But they're still quite thick. But you'd see them because they've got the yellow vests on or the orange vests on. But there's no one there. And I'm thinking, where's all these search parties that said they had out? Where? You can see all over there, all over there in the distance, in these fields. You can't see any search parties. And I'm sure if they flew over these trees, which I hope they do. Right? 
there are, there are, you'll be able to see in between the trees. And you can't see no orange jackets or yellow jackets or nothing. So where are all the searchers? On the 27th of February, where are all the searchers? Oh, let's just, just look. There's no one. There's lots of cars and people hanging around there, but listen, I don't see them walking the field. So don't see them doing anything. I can't see the search parties anywhere. A little bit later, we'll see a search party of three horse riders, three main police or whatever, rangers or whatever they call them, on horseback. Three. Three. That's it. That's always... Now, look, it's flying over. I know it's very dense. Right? And I'm sure if you was to zoom in, you'd be able to see a bit. But you don't see no, no orange vest, no yellow vest. That's the score. That's the air vent, which I thought maybe could bring on. Right? This is all the school. Look all the ground. Can you see any searchers walking them fields? No. See, there's the entrance to it there. They've now got it blocked off. Right? Look, I cannot see... Even in the far distance, anyone walking these fields or anything. I'm thinking, where are all the search parties? Where's all the searches that you said you had out looking? That we're seeing on the news channels, on these news videos of them coming back from the searches. Where are they? And I know they're quite thick, these trees are, but you can see in between. The trees, sometimes you can just get a glimpse in between the trees. Oh, look, one horse, lone man, one horseman there. There's one. Oh, another one there, I think, two. Coming down to these two police officers there and a third police officer on a horse. Right? These two police officers on the horses are coming down to these. That's the only search team I have seen in this 45 minutes. Would those on the horses be Texas, Ran Texas Rangers? Or whatever they call them. But three horse people, three people on horseback. That is it. That is all we've seen in this video. I don't know about you if you're watching this, if you're watching this on replay. I'm still searching the ground. I'm looking at the ground in case anything. I'm thinking, what am I doing? This is eight months ago. But it just, I'm just dumbfounded by 
Where's all these search parties that were supposed to be out there? Combing these fields, combing the hedgerows, the trees, the rivers, the roads. You know what I mean? Where were they? Oh, look, we've got some cows. <laughs> Where were the search teams? You can't see, you can see in between these trees. You can see the search teams with the orange vests and whatever on. You can see them, but you're not seeing none of them. There's a blue tub there, you know what I mean? Was all that actually checked? It's... You're not telling me they checked all that area on the Monday. So Tuesday they've got them looking in a different five mile radius. You know what I mean? You know why? I know a lot of this is private land, but you've only got to knock on the door and say, look, we're so, like, show me your ID. So I have to go through your, over your land. Is there any buildings that we could check, any sheds? But you don't see no one. Not one person is out there. And you'd see them, look, you could see them through them trees. If they was in that trees searching, you'd see them. In the orange and yellow vests and jackets they wore. But we saw them coming back from the searches on the news channels at the end. Oh, look at them all the time. But we're not seeing nothing here. Where the hell were they searching on the Tuesday? Look, you would see them through the trees if they was in them trees. They're nowhere. So what area were they searching on the Tuesday? Because they definitely weren't searching this area. Oh, is that a car? Let's go back up onto me. That's one of their truck things, their little driver things that they was using to get across open fields and all that lot. Where's all the search teams, please? Where are all the search teams? Is that part, part of the search teams where they're searching the rivers? Possibly. That's the cemetery. Right?
Now, along here, by hopefully, we'll get to see right this road here. Once she zooms out again, looks like we're following the guy in the truck at the moment. But when they say, oh, we've had thousands of miles checked, did you actually go in on hands and feet and check them? Did you walk into these tree lines? Did you walk in there? Did you have search parties in these tree lines? Or did you just go by horseback or by your little cars? Come on. Did you? Because I'm not seeing no search parties in these woods anywhere. Don't know about anyone else. Don't want to put anyone down. But I'm just stating I don't see any search parties. And you're not going to tell me they've searched all those areas on the Monday. <laughs> no, it's not happening. Where's the search for? Oh, I can't get over this. Where's the fucking foot soldiers? Where are they? They could be in there. We might not be able to see them. But you would see something. You'd see a bit of orange or a bit of yellow, surely. Nice eyes with a pun. Hmm. You can see some orange or yellow vests in between them trees. This is the site again. Now, hold on. Right, a woman was saying she'd been watching. There's an area on this construction site, right? And I think I'll show you where. There's the construction site, right? There, right? Have they searched that? Did they search that? Could they have climbed in there for sh to sleep? Because they like Minecraft. And this woman said she noticed some birds over there, but she said sometimes you do get the uh, animal get in there get, and get caught in there and trapped in there and all that lot. But did they actually take that pile apart, stick by stick, branch by branch? And go through it. Because it don't look like they're doing anything. That it, in fact, it looks like the workers are still doing their work. Oh, and uh, the, the, that there, over there, that's the retention pond. Right, now let me just go back a little bit so we can see it a little bit more. Oh, right, there's the retention pond. That's the retention pond that I said the dog dived into. And that's a retention pond that got drained. 
Now, I'm wondering, is it that one, or was it that one? Because there's two. And there's actually a third one further down. And there's another one to the left of this, over this side somewhere. Right? Now, when our drivers was on the phone to Chris, he had parked his car here. Right back here. But Chris was saying, from what Chris was saying, that wasn't the retention pond. I don't know. But like I said, one of the neighbours who lives in these houses, one of these houses around here on this scheme, on this estate, on whatever, they said they have seen Sebastian in the area, they just hadn't seen him on the Monday. So we know Sebastian used to go over there, and yet Chris said, oh no, Sebastian never went over there. We've drove over there in the car. But he's never gone over there by foot. Wow. Uh, do you want to call that person who said they've seen Sebastian over there? Do you want to speak to them, Chris? Because they said when the police went to their house that morning, on the Monday morning, it's on the police uh, tape, right, dispatch tape, that a neighbour stated that they had... They have seen Sebastian in this vicinity, just not today. They knew Sebastian, they knew what he looked like. They had not seen him on the Monday, but they had seen him before in that vicinity. And yet Chris said, no, never been over there. He's been over there in the car with me, but never walked over there. So. Just shows how much you know, Chris. So that's why I'm saying that uh, if the dogs did pick up a scent for Sebastian over at that retention pond, right, that could have been from, he went missing on a Monday, that could have been from, we don't know what he did Saturday. Right? We don't know if he went over there on the Thursday night after school. Perhaps while his mum's still at work. We don't know if he went there on a Friday night after school while his mum's still at work. You, don't, you know what I mean? We don't know what he did while his mum wasn't there. So, for Chris to say, no, he's never been over there. He's been there by car, but never by foot. No, not from what a, a neighbour who lives there has said. Who has seen Sebastian in the vicinity before. So that scent could have come from any time up to then, any time during the last seven days up until that Monday morning. It's a big area they've searched, but where are the searchers? I thought that area would have been smothered with searchers. But no, no, nothing, no searchers here. Nothing to be seen here. Go away, nothing to be seen. Which is true. Nothing to be seen. Oh, oh, we've got one of the horseback riders. Where's his teammates? They've got to be around there somewhere. Right? And I've only seen three horseback men. Three. So, no, it just doesn't...
Hát tudok kilépni, ja. Ja, hát szállt le. Róla. De ez van. De ez ilyen behoz vagy, ja. Kicsi jobb, aj. Need to split open to cover a bigger area, possibly. I'll put the sign down for a bit. For See what I mean? Because he's closing up, he's picking up that guy on horseback. Now, if, he's been going in close to these trees. So, he'd pick up any searchers that were out there. Any search teams, he'd pick them up. See, I seen this on someone else's channel, and they found it on another YouTuber's channel. And rather than going and finding the actual source, she just showed it from another YouTuber's channel. And I thought, no, no, I want. To, I know that channel. I'm going to go on to the channel five. Can you see? Right, and I found it, and I did. I went onto their, I think it was on their Facebook page or something like that. I can't remember where it was now, but I found it off there. This is not streamed from another YouTuber. This is streamed from Channel 5 Live Tennessee from the 27th of February 2024. So this is the Tuesday after the day after he went missing. But where's all the searches? Come on. Pop your heads up, someone. Come on. I can't believe. But look, this is the uh, building site here. Construction site. There's the retention pond. We're going to go over it. There's the retention pond. I'm just going to speed this last bit up. Because it's so slow. Right. This is being speeded up now. Oh, look, we got the man in the truck again. Okay? 
going along slowly along the hedgerows. But where's the people? Where's the foot soldiers? Where's the foot searchers? Where have you sent them? You are not telling me that they have searched all that area on the Monday. Right? By foot on the Monday. No way. Not happening. Right? Because first of all, you've got to get the initial reports from the family. Then you've got to sort out the organisations and get these searches in. Like law enforcement departments and fire brigade departments and all these other searches they use. Yeah? Then they've got to sit out and say, whoa, here's the map. You lot go there. You lot do that. You lot do that. You know what I mean? Now, I'm not going to get that done. All this searched on the Monday. So where are all the searches? I've seen three horseback men. And there they are again now, just coming through another gate. You know what I mean? That's all I see in this video, are those three horseback men and one bloke in one of them carts. That can get across fields. But you don't see no pop of orange or yellow vests in between some of these trees. You don't. So why, where's all the searches? See, he's zooming in and you're not picking up. And yet if that bloke had been on his horseback like he was, he zoomed in like this and you picked him up on his horseback. You're not picking anything up. Nothing. So where's all the searches? Why is it so quiet in that area? It should be buzzing with high, a hive of people in that area looking. And we've got no one. No foot soldiers out there. There's the school. Which we're heading to now again. That's, that's the storage unit there and the store where rumour was that Chris's mum was parked up. But because they went two weeks after it was first reported, they went two weeks later to get the footage. The footage had been taped over. See, there's a, another thing. Oh, that's what I wanted to show you. Just back here. Um, going a bit too far, but it's all right. I'll stop it when it gets closer to it again. I cannot believe there's no search parties anywhere to be seen, apart from those three on horseback. No. That's the retention pond that is said was drained. Here, there's a path. That path leads up to this road at the back here to a gate and you can get onto the road so there's the path there's the other retention pond right there's a path there that leads to i don't know is it the church the church 
Yeah. But this path leads up there, and you can get a car up there. Yeah, there's one thing that bothers me, and it's peep. It's a. Uh, it's widely said that if there's some, if there's an incident where there's a missing child or a murder, homicide or something like that, and they never, they don't know who the person is, the abductor is, if there's a miss, if there's been an abduction or if there's been a homicide or whatever, and there's one person that seems to push themselves into the investigation like to show a lot of interest in the investigation then it's like why why are you so interested in this investigation look there's a shed I heard that shed was fucking searched because it wasn't searched on the Tuesday because there's no search parties out there apart from three men on a horseback and one man in a little truck. <laughs> what I mean? Where are all the search parties? Unless they've got them over here somewhere. Searching over here. We wouldn't see them from this height. But if the helicopter went over that area and just zoomed in as it went over, we might see some search parties over that area. But there's definitely none in the immediate area. She's going over there. She's trying to zoom in to see if what you can see. You know what I mean? And you're not seeing nothing. I'm not seeing no search parties. Please tell me if I'm wrong. Please. Tell me I'm wrong. But would you not expect to see some search parties in these trees somewhere? Rather than just three men on a horseback, on horseback, and one little car truck. Right? We do not expect to see search parties. I know a lot of this is private land, but law enforcement only have to drive up to the door and say, look, we're doing a search. There's a little boy missing. He went missing yesterday. We need to search the land. I bet you got your permission. Yes. Yeah, go ahead. No. Nope. Why? That would be my next question. Why? If someone said, no, nope, sorry, you're not looking. But where was the search parties? We didn't see none, apart from three men on horseback and one in a little field truck. And loads of police cars and loads of people standing around the fire station, chit-chatting and whatever. Three people sitting at a table doing whatever they're doing, I don't know. But we didn't see no actual foot soldiers out there. Why? Was that some county? Yet we see them coming back. Oh, you showed us on the news all these tired uh, foot soldiers coming back from their searches. But this is just showing us there's no search parties out there. And this was the day after Sebastian went missing. Now, I've got a big problem with that, if that is the case. Where are the search parties? You've said these areas have all been covered. It's shown on the map. These areas have all been covered. So where's the search parties? Anyway, as I was saying, 
right? You get that one person who likes to um, poke his nose in, yeah? And just to see how what's going on with the investigation, what's happening, and all this lot, right? So, oh, where is it now? Let's go back a bit. I did have it earlier. Yeah. Now this is 7 minutes 58 minutes long. 7 minutes 58 seconds long. So, I'm going to play it all. Right? Because, as I said, why is Chris, I know he's the stepfather, Right? But why is he so interested? Why does he seem to know everything? Right? Where Seth knew nothing. Why was they telling Chris everything, but Seth nothing? Now, this was done five months ago. This video was put out five months ago. So, Sebastian had been missing three months by then. So. Said that they did or she did, and, or didn't, and I didn't know what, who she actually worked for, so. Yeah, well, there's a lot of BS out there. People say there was no dog sent. That's what, and that's what I heard. And then I read it. I read the article from the actual news, and it said they, the dog got a scent, a scent that they uh, from an article clothing or something. And then they tracked all the way here, like several times. Well, here's, here's, here's your better one. There was a, the dispatcher. The, the call got released from the dispatchers to the deputies and the responding units. In that uh, release of information, you can clearly hear. Dispatcher and the cops all say the dog's got to send this over here in this pond. Okay. And I mean, that it, for people to say, no, it doesn't matter. Yeah, and that's what. Deputies said that shit in the And that's, what, yeah, the and that's, that's what everybody kept saying. And I'm like, there's got to be some truth to this because that doesn't make any sense. Like, so yeah, they tracked track here. So. Yeah. And then, like I said, the path that they tracked. So, our, if you're in that situation, yeah, I'm directly. The next step is over to the left is our subdivision. Okay. It's called Victoria Place. Okay. The set that they got, as soon as you turn in our subdivision, you're on Kelly. Drive it all the way up to the very top of the hill at a four way. You'll see that to the right, they're cutting in a new road that will link all this together. Okay. Yeah. The set is that what he's talking about? Directly right there? Oh. So a track. Yeah, there's no question. The dogs were on the track. It was an honor. Sorry, my mouse is hopping over the plate. Oh. They look where they are, right? They are up at the end of that road, where that retention pond is just over here. Is Actually, where he's looking is over at the retention pond, where the retention pond was. Where it was drained, right? Because that's the top of that new, that road, where you first pull in to drive up that, into that new housing vicinity. That's that road you go up. You've got one main road that you go up, and then you've got other roads leading off it. That's that main road. And the retention pond, you've seen the house, you've seen that house in that flyover. 
Right? Hang on. I'll try and get it again. Oh, I can't get it, man. Right. But you see that house? There, and the retention pond is just over there somewhere. So, listen to what he's telling him. And do, you, do you know how, like, how much they actually drained? They drained the whole thing. It's okay. So, initially, when, it, when, it, when they went over to look at it, it was only neat. Uh, from the picture that you showed me, there's a lot of new runoff. Yeah, that's what where they're cut. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out. I was like, I don't know how shallow it was before or after. Yeah. I'm, I'm five foot nine, and it was knee deep. Okay. <laughs> so, and they, they even drained it and still walked it. Okay. Just so they the actually walked it. I didn't know that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and that is actually information that was told to me by law. Yeah. So they actually. Because I went on a. No. I'm tired of the BS in the room. That's what I, I kept trying to tell everybody. I was like, it's, you know, the kid. I said, he, what he said, I can give you a little bit more information other than what that, all that BS is on the streets. Right? So, what information is it, Chris, that you can tell him? But you're not prepared to tell anyone else. Hmm? Is it information that you shouldn't really be telling him? Left the house, and then the internet went crazy with rumors and speculation. And I was like, I don't go off of rumors. I go off of what we got now. And I said something about that pond. I said, and it just stopped. I said, so that's where I want to go. That's where I want to search and try to figure this out. So to work backwards from the pond, okay, if you were to walk from the pond, go straight up into the construction site, you'll see where they cut the road and it turns left. If you walk that all the way back, it runs you to our subdivision. Okay. If you go down Kelly, all the way down to Stafford, and walk down towards Stafford and toward our house, from our house, I'm gonna, if you're looking at my house, I'm going to tell you where the dog stand went. They started on the front porch. Okay. Because off the front porch, the dog cut to the right. They go all the way down the side of the house along the fence. So with the back side, or the back, that back right. to the door. If you're looking, if you're looking at my house, okay, it's going to be the right hand side. The dog goes all the way down the fence. The dog comes all the way back up into the yard, and then it cuts diagonally to the house next door to us through their back yard. And that, and that is the direction which the dogs take off. Now, after that, that's where they get over to the main road, go up Kellen, and head over to uh, the other subdivision. Okay. Now, isn't that funny what Chris has just told to him about how the dogs went? When you stand outside their house, looking at their house, right, the dogs went to the right, yeah, towards the... Uh, their neighbor's house, went along the side of their house to the fence, cut back again, then cut across their, the garden, the, the community area and the back garden of their neighbor's house across to the house behind. Isn't that funny how that is the same direction the lights went? the same direction because if you listen to uh, another YouTube video I'm not going to put his name because I'm not going to put <laughs> not like I don't like him he's good he's, he puts some good work out there I just don't want to oh, sit here find his channel find the video and put his link up right so he's talking to this YouTuber and he tells him and 
this YouTuber put out a video of the dogs going down to the right, right, and down behind the neighbour's house, down to the corner of their road, Stafford Court, and then up. But that isn't what he says. He said the dogs cut across to the neighbour's house beyond them, to their garden behind them, which is that house where it's a second house up on Kelling Road, right? Where that car was seen parked, where two people or one person got out and then we're seeing that light coming across to that one person standing there and then that one person coming across come across very, very slowly at first and i'm sure you could make no, out dogs, I guess. two people right because then after she, that one light meets up with the second light right you see the first uh, subject two again quickly move back over again to the direction they came towards their house the reason they went back quickly was because they was on their own they didn't have anyone with them right i mean how many yeah a lot of dogs but day one there was five dogs there was a belgian melanoir uh, a blue a blue healer, two bloodhounds, and a blue pig. I know with good dogs, like they'll do the track if it's on the ground, and then if they smell a stronger scent and the air if it's closer, they'll go to that direct scent. So if all the dogs were tracking actually on the ground, then I feel like this is like this is the place, like the spot to figure it out. Because if it would have if it would have cross tracked, like actually like headed back, they should have been able to pick up on it. A good so, dog. In the eight days of the, the variance in searching, in the eight days, on day one, the five dogs did that. Out of eight days, three, three different dogs from three different groups um, went to that same area in that same set. On day one, two of those dogs did the same path. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that was the Bloodhound and, a, and the Blue team. It was probably a better dog. Yeah, those two were probably yeah. the better ones. Now, the guy, I mean, I can't remember this guy. I called him Michael, but I think his, they call him Michelle. Okay. He's French. Uh, he's out of North Carolina, I believe, and he, he, he trains. He teaches, the, yeah, he trains trainers or canine handlers. Yes. They brought his dogs out, and one of his dogs did that same path. From what I was told, that's. That's why I was like, well, there we go, folks. That's why, the, out of all the dogs, there was at least three consistent kids that knew that. that right. Path. And then what, what are the strongest pack? Yeah, the strongest, the strongest, most recent set. And there was a couple dogs, like one dog uh, went over to the long hole fight and got there and he lost his scent. Uh, the rest of the dogs all picked up scents, but then they go in all different directions and they lose. Well, thank. I appreciate your information, and I'm gonna try to figure this out and keep on, just keep on working at it. And if I get anything, I'll let you know. Yeah, the uh, that guy sent you uh, info, Ken Wagner. Okay. Uh, he's the EMA director for some of the town. Uh, he was the one I guess they were doing. He was responsible for the ground searching and the waterways and the caves and everything. Okay. Uh, he, I mean, you can't reach out to him. He can give you more really? details. As far as like the water, what's been and, covered? Yeah, in the caves and stuff. He, he'll probably even show you, maybe, I don't know, but I would reach out to him and he will give you the best uh, physical aspect of the search that took place. He's the one that was in charge of it. Okay, I can do that. All right, man. All right, if I, you need some, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a call. Is, uh, okay. All right, thank you very much. All right, thank you, sir. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Now, Chris said that when he spoke to that, I can't think of his name, 
That guy from Dark Diapers. Right. That he told him to get in touch with, and he did. He told him to get in touch with the guy who's do, sorting out the searches because he'd make, he know where best to look. Right. But before he told him that, he's making out that he knew everything, that he was told everything. He's the one to go to if you want to find any information out. I'm thinking, hold on. You just said in this interview that everything you told him, law, law, he, he'd already spoke to law enforcement before speaking to him. Right? So, did Narc Divers try to get in touch with him beforehand? We don't know. Because why would he say he spoke to law enforcement? Right? Before speaking to him. Right? To get their approval. To speak to him. He wasn't very happy when he found out that Narc Divers had recorded that conversation, that phone call. He was not happy. I could go back and find you the interview he spoke on. I can't remember which one it was, but I would. For the sake of Sebastian Wayne Drake Rogers, I would do that. Right, but I don't want to because it's not helping Sebastian. We're just raking up old news. Right, but I thought I'd show you that because. I just got the feeling he was trying to get them away. It's like, it's like, he's putting this information out there about this dog hitting on a scent and diving in that pond, right? Yet the police have come back and said it was a false negative, right? Or false positive or whatever it was. And I'm thinking, well, that doesn't make sense. I think they said it was a false positive. It's positive, but it's false or something like that. And I thought, well, that doesn't make sense. But then I thought, oh, darn. We heard that in the uh, dispatch call, how they were not able to say she, they'd seen him in the vicinity, but they just hadn't seen him on the Monday. So, yes, yeah, Sebastian could have gone over by that retention pond. His mum and dad said he liked water, but not dirty water. He liked to swim, but not in dirty water. He liked to swim in a swimming pool, at the swimming baths or something like that, where the water's clean and hygienically clean and all that. Lot. He's not going to head over to a, a muddy pond. He might go over there to see what's going on. Right? So, yeah, I think his scent would lead over there. And the fact that Chris was pushing this narrative that the dogs hit on a scent and went there and did, they did this and they did that, I think, no. No. It's got people looking in the wrong area. And that's what Chris would like everyone to believe. Like, don't forget, at the beginning, in one of the interviews, he said something like, and I'll find it for you and I'll clip it. He never expected it to take off like it did. Right? And I said, well, excuse me, but you're doing an interview which is on YouTube. So, yes. People are going to be watching and listening to these news interviews, news station interviews, because they go online. Right? They put them out so they can go online as well. And I'm thinking, you know, your narrative was he walked out that house on his own. He left that house. He just left. Right? Don't know why. He just left. He's a missing child. Is a runaway. That's the narrative you like the police to have gone with, and the police would have gone with that. But 
something happened on the Wednesday. And I think that was when they realised about the lights. Because then on the Wednesday, and one of the interviews after the Wednesday, that's when Katie brought up the fact about the little torch light had gone missing as well because I've not been able to find that. Oh, a bit coincidental that you now bring that into the narrative and the police have just got video proof of some activity around your house where torches were involved. Right? So, it's like, see, they just added to the narrative to fit the story. And like the, the relative said, she's holding back on something. But she knows if she says anything, she's going to lose everything she's got. And so will Chris. Because they're part of it. They've instigated this case. They've had the... They reported him missing. Chris wanted this to go down as a, a runaway. That's really what he wanted to do. He was hoping the police would just take it as a runaway. And I think Sheriff's County, uh, Sumner County Sheriff's Office probably would have just let it go as a runaway. But TBI, when they seen those videos coming out, and other evidence piling up about maybe ring doorbells not working, video cameras going down, you know what I mean? All a bit suspicious. And then they've got the light video. Because they didn't manage to knock that one out. Because that one was hardwired. By hardwired, I mean it wasn't uh, on like um, Bluetooth or anything like that. It was hardwired to the internet. So it's a bit harder to knock cameras out that are hardwired. Anyway, by doing what I've done, I know it's over nearly f three hours, 40 something minutes long, but I managed to get a lot covered tonight. Thank you for being here with me. I do appreciate this. Show me some love on X, please. I do appreciate Leave me a comment. I do reply or I, I acknowledge you by showing some love back. Right? If you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you're on X, if you don't follow me already, please click the follow button. Because I do go live every night. Apart from once a fortnight. I don't go live on a Friday night. I don't go live no more on a Saturday and Sunday. I'm having Saturdays and Sundays off from now on. But once a fortnight, I will not be going live on a Friday. Because I have my grandkids there, or my grandson. So, please, if you're on X, and you don't want to come over to YouTube, that's fine. But you don't, and you're not following me, please subscribe and follow me on X. If you want YouTube, give this video a like. Please share it, leave me a comment. Let me know what your opinions are on that first interview with the relative and what you think about Chris being poking his nose into it, wanting to know, needing to know what's going on. Right? Is that control freak? He needs to know what's going on? I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Because it's now 3 hours 45 minutes, so I'm going to leave it there and say goodnight. So until next time, stay safe.